afternoon, sir. Could we interest you in some... SpongeBob boys? SpongeBob boys! SpongeBob boys! SpongeBob boys! SpongeBob boys! SpongeBob boys! Welcome to Spabbly Boobly Bibbly Bobbly 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 Wow, that may be the most inaccessible way we've ever opened our inaccessible show. That's an achievement. <laughs> it's the bottom of the ocean. It's very accessible. All you have to do is sink. It truly is. And now, me and Gus are not drowning alone down here today. We, in fact, have a very special guest. Do you want to introduce yourself? We've all got the, the ball and chain dragging us to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Zooey. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's it. An international man of mystery. <laughs> international man of mystery, Zooey. <laughs> Who is a voice actor and writer Yippee. and artist? A many talented boy Aww. to join the SpongeBob Boys. You'll be able to hear Zooey most recently in terms of our work in uh, episode nineteen of Game the Mysteries. Because yes, in our in our absence, that is how many episodes have come <laughs> out. It's right here on YouTube. Go listen to it right now. Now, it's really good. Uh, Season two, baby. Else. Zoe plays an evil teenager. <laughs> it's it's yeah. With psychic powers. I see. I may not be a teenager anymore, but I do debatably have psychic powers. So one thing is true. It's true. <laughs> one thing's true. Mm, mm. It's actually Gus and I both woke up this morning and we're like, huh, we should put Zooey on today's of episode your own of Spongebob free Boys. volition. You totally thought of that yourself, and I didn't mind control you to make me a part of this episode. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, because we're all about free will here on Spongebob <laughs> Boys, to the extent that any of this could be done of our own free will. It, it more or less happens to us, but the choice, we made a choice to exist through it. You're goddamn right. So, okay, I don't see any need for further pomp and circumstance. You've gone to go subscribe to and check out Kingmaker. You want to hear us talk about horrible episodes, and since they are the fresh blood here, we are going to begin... With Zooey's oh episode. What was it, it called, was called, Zooey? Escape from Beneath Glove World. And it was not. It was <laughs> not. <laughs> what the? What? That's so ominous. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it was not a normal. Okay, so in. B okay, I guess I was blessed with this because it's not your normal 11 minute, 11 minute episode. It is a full 22 minute epic. <laughs> <laughs> there is no oh, there's boy. no break in between there's no time to breathe <laughs> because we are underwater uh, of course and uh so my yes mine is called escape from beneath Glove world i imagine it was that long because it's just such a like dense and thematically rich episode with so many great character moments uh, oh and yeah points, i mean right? it did have a lot of twists what i'm immediately like anticipating is uh that movie escape from tomorrow but just set in like the okay universe okay but oh, no. just like a a weird creepy black and white raunchy don't sort be, of thing don't use that premonition yet because that's a little scarily close <laughs> It's a little. It's, no, a, it, no. it's got some. It's got some theme park themes to it. Uh, and isn't Escape from Tomorrowland like a, like a Disney like parody movie or something, right? There's Tomorrowland, which was the Brad Bird like yeah, yeah. Disney movie. Escape from Tomorrow is a weird indie film In that Disney. was filmed entirely yes. at the Disney parks. Like illegally. Well, it's very Super close. Weird. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, there, there are some Disney. I feel like there are some Disney references in here, so you're a little bit on the money. Oh. This is like a Disney conspiracy episode. It, it, it is. I, I shit you not. It is. It actually is. Oh, what? So how does it oh. begin? Let, let's let's okay. begin our horrifying journey to beneath so. Glove World. <laughs> They're gonna find the vault of not safe for work Mickey Mouse pictures. <laughs> Oh my no. god! Didn't didn't they just recently find like the the this like pamphlet of like SpongeBob behind the scenes shit that was like that? Do I sound crazy? Oh, it wouldn't no. surprise oh. me. Yeah, there's gotta be. That. I watch too much like recovered right. found media. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a weird horny show. Wouldn't surprise right, so. me. Let's hear about Escape from Glove World <laughs> from beneath. beneath. Well, we Glove open World. Yes. above Glove World. 
at a baseball game, uh, oh. which is, I feel like it's fitting because SpongeBob was just at the Super Bowl sports game, as, as from what I've heard. He was, wasn't he? Doing yeah, live commentary. So, um, so SpongeBob <laughs> and Patrick are uh, at this giant baseball ride thing. They're on this, they're in a giant baseball and they're being propelled back and forth across this uh, massive, um, massive baseball field. They're really enjoying it. They land in a giant mitt, like a glove mitt. Uh, and because of the high velocity of like them speeding through the air, they land in the baseball ball mitt and like fade into the chairs. Um, so it's very fun, <laughs> very, <laughs> very fun, very painful. <laughs> um, so they leave the ride. Which I think is called the Two Fisted Fun Ride at Glove World. You can't <laughs> call it that. I couldn't Come tell. on now. I, cu I couldn't tell what SpongeBob said, but I really hope it's that <laughs> because it was funny. What the did he mean by this? Fun ride. The Two Fisted Fun the Ride at Glove World, of course. Ride. Did did Charlie direct this episode? I'm sorry. Charlie. Hey yo, <laughs> they're not Charlie. even here, and you roasted them from afar. <laughs> Sorry, Jelly, you're catching strays already. <laughs> so, What's happening? Um, whatever happened, he really liked the two-fisted fun ride at Glove World. And so <laughs> they they love it <laughs> so wouldn't? much. <laughs> Who wouldn't? They, they love it so much that SpongeBob says verbatim, I had to go back and rewind it multiple times to write this down correctly. He says he'd like to ride the ride a million, zillion, jillion, dillion, cotillion times again. Uh, so Patrick expels that many tickets from his belly button after expelling it uh, after eating a, a ham fist on a stick and then they go on the ride that amount of times <laughs> can we oh, rewind God. to what a ham fist do you, on do a you stick know? is yeah. moving on so after they ride the ride many times <laughs> they um they get off uh, they get off the ride, they ride it that many times, and they get off the ride, but their mouths are, like, eternally stuck in a smiling position, um, because they were in the oh air so much that it, that it just got, like, pushed back, like, YB and, like, Coraline, when, like, the other mother, like, stitches back, oh. like, <laughs> oh. like, his oh. mouth. That's oh, God. so funny. So they're scaring it's children. It's face all over again. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're scaring children. Because they're so happy to be at Fun World. Uh, sorry, Glove World. But it is fun. It is Fun World. Power World. Power, yeah! <laughs> yeah. They're a couple they're, they of pals are. in the world. They're what best you pals. About? They might be what a little bit more. What do you about it? They might be a little bit more than pals. They have guns. Forget um, about it. <laughs> at Power World on Twitter, add SpongeBob and Patrick to the game. <laughs> you know they could. They're they're legal. They're they're yeah. Just pink. just just swap their palettes. Make SpongeBob pink and and Patrick yellow, and there you go. New pals. <laughs> Call it the two fisted fun they expansion pack. Yet, so I think they probably legally could distinct. Do it. <laughs> legally distinct. They've gone mad with yeah. power. So. <laughs> They've gone mad with pals. Anyway, with pal pal. Oh no! I tried to make a pun of pal and power. Power. It didn't work. Power. Anyway, anyway, SpongeBob and Patrick are scaring the kids. They're freaking them out. <laughs> exactly. They're they're terrifying the kids. Um, and they decide to take a break. Um, at the Pal World Theater. Um, which SpongeBob says very archaically in this. You're saying it. You're, you said it again. You meant Glove World. <laughs> right? <laughs> I did not mean that. I <laughs> swear. <laughs> to Pal World Theater. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I'm We're sorry. not sponsored. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nintendo, <laughs> please. Nintendo, don't sue I'm us. I'm gonna demonetize you again. I'm so sorry. Not again. Not again. I just got just out of the demon. So, so much of Nintendo's music. <laughs> anyway, off to the so, Glove World so Theater. So they they head to the Glove World Theater. Um, and they slap the grins off each other's faces, literally, so they can, like, re-enter society without scaring people. Which doesn't make sense, because the theater is dark, <laughs> so no one would see them anyway. But it's fine, I guess. You can mm. smile as much as you want in a movie theater. That's I was smiling so much. Anyone with <laughs> grin. The police can't stop you. I'm just smiling, officer. It's free, and the cops so... can't stop you. 
Oh, spe- speaking of the cops, they do make an appearance, but we're not there yet. So, sp- so oh boy. Uh, they go to the oh, theater shit. together. Uh, they do this cute little hug thing, um, which I'm 100% that this is a, they are having a date in, they are having a date at Glove World. And it more develops, I, I say that as a joke, but more develops, and I feel like that this was actually their date at Glove World. It's very cute. So, they... I think that's oh. canon. Yay! I'm, I'm here for... SpongeBob X okay, sweet, Patrick. Because it will be canonized by the I end. I think of it. it's a healthy dynamic. I think so too. Unlike being at pa- uh, fuck, not fucking Power World. <laughs> <laughs> All like these a worlds. Glove. <laughs> like a glove. Oh god! So on the stage, uh, they watch like a, a movie thing about like the theme park, and the stage like opens up, and this animatronic shark thing like comes out and he's apparently the creator of glove world uh he announces himself as i had to write the name down as heronius glove (laughs) (laughs) yeah good old Hieronymus bosch reference in a spongebob episode yeah you know good old tenaris love He announces himself um, by, I kept calling him Heronius Glove (laughs) instead, but, um, and he uh, introduces the place as again, verbatim, welcome to the wonderfully whimsical and wickedly woven world of the glove. Uh, It is, (laughs) it is very dystopian. There's a screen that drops from the ceiling that starts playing like, like, uh, like glove world shit on the screen um and it it's, b- begins a musical number um so the animatronics start singing about gloves how you can use gloves their glove brand gloves to steal without fingerprints they also feature <laughs> what <laughs> yeah <laughs> they also feature stock images oh wait a second <laughs> yeah this is starting to sound a lot more like a certain other, not a world per se, but a land that time forgot. This is this is giving me like crypto land vibes all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> to the moon. To the moon. You can steal all you want with this technology. <laughs> well that yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they they have like they explain all the different ways you can use the gloves. And then real stock images of like real humans wearing gloves show up. And then robot gloves start dancing around. We got clean Eliza like Eliza fish, like wearing gloves. Um it's all a giant ad for gloves. R.I.P. Yeah. <laughs> this episode was made in 2020, so it was... The gloves killed her. <laughs> they did! They did! It was, it was a cover-up. It was a glover-up. <laughs> they gloved her up, and then this, they covered it up. This is this is a classic uh, Spongebob Boys detour, but have either of you heard of the highly controversial musical For the Love of a Glove? No. <laughs> No. So it is an unauthorized stage musical about Michael Jackson that posits that his white glove was an alien parasite that fed on virgin blood (laughs) and it mind controlled him to do all of the things he allegedly did. And needless to say, the Jackson estate is not particularly pleased with the existence (laughs) of For the Love of a Glove. But it's out there, and I don't know when I'm ever going to get a chance to bring it up again <laughs> here in Glove World. It plays in Glove World seven nights a week. I mean, it sure does sound like it's out there, Henry. It sounds really out there. <laughs> does a bootleg it really exist? does. Does a glove boot I, I want to know now, don't you? <laughs> we should all see this. It was Hieronymus I mean, Glove the, the whole time. <laughs> He, he needs did it. that virgin blood. <laughs> he made the Michael Jackson's children's hospital. Children's hospital. <laughs> Awful. All right, <laughs> sorry, Zoe, back to you. <laughs> children's hospital in the world. In the world. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so SpongeBob and Patrick uh, watch this giant ad, and they talk about how much they love gloves and the glove guy, and they want to meet the glove guy. So when the curtain goes down, they break in behind the curtain, and it turns into F- Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted because Patrick <laughs> rips the animatronic. Okay, so he starts like shaking the hand like very ferociously of this of this you know Heronius 
glove man because he's so thrilled to like meet him and the hand breaks off so then the animatronic starts going i need repair i need repair i like with glowing red eyes and spongebob uh sorry patrick puts the animatronic in a headlock and starts yelling shut up shut up we can't get caught back here we can't get caught um and in trying to shut him up in putting him in this headlock which patrick is strangely very violent in this episode (laughs) <laughs> he, he, is that the lock of 87 <laughs> he rips the head off he rips <laughs> oh my god he rips it was the lock of 87 it was he rips the head off on accident he fucking suplexed him he does and spongebob panics because he thinks that patrick killed like the real Heronius glove <laughs> so 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 this be- wait so it's a Murder mystery now or murder co- of cover up? Uh, to... it, it, f- shortly, because it's not a cover up for long. Because SpongeBob witnessing his best friend commit murder backs like into the the stage board and like hits a button that says like do not press or something. I don't know, like SpongeBob logic. And the curtain arises and the entire audience sees the decapitated Heronius glove. So, <laughs> so everyone starts panicking. <gasps> Uh, everyone believes it's the real man who Patrick decapitated. The cops break in. They see Patrick with the head uh, after everybody, like, escapes and leaves. Um, and Patrick starts swinging the head around in self-defense. Um, from there... Oh my god! Why is... Why is this not even the first Spongebob episode where the crux of the episode is the main characters thinking they've killed somebody (laughs) and trying to, like, get out of it? Because they did this to the health inspector really early on in the show as well. It is just really funny that, like, this has become, like, Patrick has maybe murdered someone very important. He's murdered Mickey Mouse, and now, like, the cops are like, put it down, put down the head! Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, they should have, like, a, like a content warning on the show, like, murder. It reminds me of, like, when I watched um, pa- uh, Pac-Man on Netflix, and the only warning they had on it was just, in all lowercase letters, fear. And it was the only... <laughs> fear! I mean, there fear. are ghosts in it, you know? <laughs> oh, it just, Listen, it just says the fear. ghost wars were a dangerous and traumatic time for the entire world, and all the yellow pack people were wiped out, except for one. <laughs> it literally just makes me think of the end of the first It movie, where Pennywise is in that well and just goes, Fear, fear yeah! And then drops down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fear. That? he was referencing Pac-Man. Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so so SpongeBob tries to de-escalate the situation. He asks for the head and tells the cops that Patrick didn't mean to kill him. He doesn't know his own <laughs> strength. And <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Is this gonna become like of mice and men? Like at the end, I was tell just me about the say... rabbit, SpongeBob. SpongeBob, tell me about the rabbits. <laughs> so, yes, so... Patrick. There'd be so many rabbits, and they'd be on a farm, and they'd be beautiful. Bam! So... Uh, two in the pat back. <laughs> <laughs> they they that is disturbing. They wholeheartedly both blat, blat. believe they have committed murder until the cops say you're stupid. This is an animatronic. It's not the real person. The cops then reveal that the real Heronius Glove's head has been frozen in an ice block for decades now. This is literally a reference to the Walt Disney what? Frozen Head theme park conspiracy of like the tunnels underneath the park. Oh my! This is God. In- Insane. It is. It They've literally gone is. There with this. Yeah, they're relieved that it's not the real glove guy, until the cops then turn around and go, "Well, you are in trouble for like breaking in. It was undiscerned. I don't know why they're still in trouble. I guess because they broke the animatronic. Vandalism. Yeah. So they are yeah. <laughs> escorted uh, to Glove World Jail. Um, which SpongeBob and Patrick are very oh. thrilled about because it's an urban legend. Uh, they get handcuffed, they get put in handcuffs, like in the shape of gloves, and they cheer about going to jail, uh, Glove World Jail. So they are taken, uh, say it with me, say the title, they are taken beneath Glove World. No. Oh, man. 
<laughs> to the, to the secret S and M club for like top tier Glove World members, <laughs> platinum card holders. SpongeBob and Patrick have just been put into Dead Man Wonderland. <laughs> 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 they, they, they are now traversing the underneath of Glove World. Um, and they are thrown into a jail cell by a ton of small glove creatures that come out from the walls and lock them inside. There are beasts now. <laughs> yeah, why would the why would those be real? <laughs> they're they're like rumple glove skins. What are they? <laughs> they're like really small. <laughs> they do a dance. They do it like they sing a little and then they disappear. So in their cell, uh, SpongeBob and Patrick are like looking around, and across from their cell, they see a reference to the Pirates of the Caribbean with like the dog and the jailed pirates. Like you know the animatronic scene where like the pirates are in jail and they're trying to tempt the dog with like the keys, like trying to get the dog mm. to like bring the keys oh, to them. Oh yeah, they, they reference that. Was that was then put into the movie happening? as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They reference that, and then there's another like pirate that they walk up to who's in like a wooden barrel who's like, um, breaking the rules. I I can't do a pirate voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, they they are like, oh no, we're not breaking the rules. We we didn't break the rules at all. We promise. Until they realize that this like wooden barrel pirate keeps repeating the same phrase. And oh my god, no way! It's an animatronic. So SpongeBob and Patrick realize that they are the only humans beneath Glove World, and that they are surrounded by animatronics. Um, that are also jailed for did, did the writer of this just go to Disney World and be like, okay, I guess this is what my next episode is about, and I'm gonna need the full 20 minutes? They were very inspired. This... Yeah. <laughs> that, no, that, that feels very probable. The other thing I'm thinking is that, like, they've gotta be fan theories about, like, this is, like, a coded, secretive, like... Uh, expose on Disney's dark secrets <laughs> in its theme parks from a non-Disney company. The truth revealed. Yeah, by beneath Glove World, <laughs> people who wouldn't really be able to know any more about it than the <laughs> average person. So it is just like Escape from Tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're stuck beneath Glove World with all robots, and then. Uh, Psych, they're mistaken because a small child with a glove on its head climbs up like from out of like a random hole in the wall and sits on top of SpongeBob. And SpongeBob's like, oh my god, wait, we're not the only human fish people living creatures in here. Th th there's there's a kid with us. Aw, <laughs> I, I wonder what he's put in for. And Patrick replies, pooping without a license? And then they start laughing. This is an important reminder to renew your poop license. <laughs> If you haven't done so recently, exactly. it'd be a real shame if you were going against the law on uh, on that one, guys. You you'll have to go to the the black market bathroom where where, <laughs> you, where you have to take the secret poop. <laughs> Awful. So uh, with how with how this chipper is, and silly this is. This is a nightmare. Yeah, no, no, it's so silly. It's so silly, Gus. Can't you see? It's so silly and chipper. A happy time. And yeah. from all that laughing... A happy time in Glove World. Yeah, from all that silly laughing and happy time in Glove World, they awaken all the other real children that have been locked down beneath Glove World uh, in jail. So... What? Yeah, there's a bunch of kids. <laughs> like, real kids. <laughs> what like, look, is going they're, on? They're off... <laughs> They're off to Lube Lagoon. Like we're saying in last episode, it's the secret like trafficking scheme. We need to get these kids out of here. They're trapped. They're trapped beneath Glove World. This episode it just becomes like this deranged QAnon fantasy. The episode is called like the Sponge of Freedom or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, literally, this is like like beneath glo beneath Glove World under the Silver Lake. You know, there's a, <laughs> a little bit of parallel there. <laughs> SpongeBob and Patrick are gonna meet a man who's like, and I did this one too. Doodly doo 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 doo. There we go. Sorry, Zoom. Oh man. Yeah, I the, you I, I could not have been. All the kids imprisoned under glove wool. Glove wool. <laughs> so yeah, they yeah. All... They all start asking, like, what they're all in jail for. So SpongeBob says they're put away for defacing property. Um, Patrick insists that it's alleged that they didn't actually do this. Um, uh? Again, Patrick is, like, a very <laughs> jaded, experienced criminal in this episode. Patrick pleads the fifth. <laughs> like, he real like, he no like, he's I been here before. I love, this is a rare mode of Patrick, but I love whenever it shows up that he's, like, 
secretly like like a malicious genius. <laughs> it really but, it like, is. He's yeah. just keeping people on their toes. I'm, his, I'm like, fully uh, just stupidity act. <laughs> I'm fully just picturing Patrick turning to Spongebob and being like, Hey, Spongebob, when you're in a situation like this, you don't need a criminal lawyer. You need a criminal lawyer. And then a fish played by Bob Odenkirk comes in (laughs) in a cameo that no child will get. That would would absolutely happen in, in a show like this. And his name would be like Saul Gilman or something. Yeah, or like Good Finn. Oh my god. Good fit, yeah, yeah, so what what were the other <laughs> imprisoned children in his? <laughs> so the one kid uh the one kid is imprisoned because they didn't keep their arms and legs inside the ride at all times. But then they sprout Fuck. like arms and legs, like immediately after saying what? that. Then another kid uh, is in prison for standing up at the top of the roller coaster and they have like a sign that says do not stand lodged into the side of their head. And then a yeah, that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a girl who's like in the shadows, and she goes, "I'm in for murder." And there's like a, <laughs> there's like a long yeah. pause, and then she goes, "I'm just kidding. I bit, I bit the lemonade guy." And then everybody like giggles. <laughs> there's like the, I love that we got this kind of like prison, but also with the like arms and leg kid potentially like SCP Foundation yeah, yeah, thing yeah. going on underneath Glove Wall. <laughs> yeah. They they don't like tell you how long these kids have been there. How long can it be if they're still kids? Unless like <laughs> the, the beneath Glove World has like like time altering properties where they it's just like, it's like Peter Pan It's like Peter Pan like you stay a kid forever. <laughs> yeah they're they're stuck they're stuck down there. <laughs> it's like, so like Peter Pan was also reimagined by Disney. It's all coming together. <laughs> Disney has the immortality vats in the basement. I mean, if they could keep Walt's head. the youth of children and the magic of whimsy to revive himself. If, if Walt's head can stay preserved down there for so long, who says, like, kids can't remain kids forever? Beneath. And that's their, like, test audiences for film. <laughs> If you preserve the innocence, the body remains preserved as well. <laughs> That's got to be a line in something. Uh, you like, <laughs> let's, 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 let's not, take a note not any that. film I'm interested in seeing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to beneath glove. So the kids, uh, in celebration of their new friends SpongeBob and Patrick, they hand out cotton candy rats. Um, Patrick gets a sugar <laughs> high and cannonballs into the. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's a ball pit in the prison. Um, so he Naturally. cannonballs into the ball pit. Of course, yes. Um, the, the kid prison. who sat on uh, SpongeBob's head at the beginning um, escapes the prison cell because he's so tiny he can just fit through the bars, and all the commotion of Patrick like distracts like everyone else from him just slipping through the bars. Uh, and he's done this a lot apparently because he just like high fives the guards and leaves. So, <laughs> so, but now I really <laughs> wish like. Oh, the, the 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 design for this kid was really funny. He's like a really tiny like jelly bean with like a glove hat and like like little buck teeth. Oh, he's like no, I'm just An a little guy. Little child. Cool. Yeah. So SpongeBob is like, oh my god, the the kid, he got out. We gotta save him, I guess. We gotta we gotta bring him back to prison. So SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he leaves, why if he leaves you the want prison, to get out too? Presumably, well, if he leaves the prison, he'll rapidly age when he reaches, <laughs> reaches the surface level. That's true. <laughs> he'll turn to dust on the surface. It's night at the museum. Yo, yes, I was just gonna yes. say it's like night at the museum where that like one guy from like uh, the Han. The cave, oh no, it was a yeah, caveman yeah, 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 that turns to dust, up, and yeah. a street sweeper yeah. immediately sweeps him up. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, can we talk about the fact that, like, that street sweeper definitely would have seen a caveman in the road for yeah. at least a few seconds before just being like, all right, more dust. I love dust. I think in New York, you learn to just, you know, kind of look the other way for these things. So true. <laughs> If a caveman turns into dust in front of you, <laughs> you sweep up that dust it's, and you go the fuck home it's and less, watch TV. It's less horrifying than like the gaggle of like the gaggle of Elmos I saw when I went to the, to the city in like oh, July. Oh god! <laughs> Isn't there like oh, an no. evil Elmo who like yells at people and like attacks? There's like people? several. 
<laughs> Evil Elmo Squad. This is this is why Elmo. Larry David strangled him because he thought he was the evil Elmo. From New York. <laughs> oh man! Hell no, no, no! <laughs> so, um, so uh, SpongeBob um tries to reach through to get the key from like the weird Pirates of the Caribbean reference, so he can like get out of the prison. But as he tries to like reach through the bars, the the prison bars are like gummy, so he's able to slide right through because we are in a fungeon. So they're able to they're able yes. to slip through Full the on bars. Fungeon. Exactly. And the kids all follow suit because they're like, oh, prison break! Whoa! Prison break! So they all break out. Um so SpongeBob not being Modern SpongeBob loves its prison breaks. <laughs> I, I they, I'm sure it does. I say as this is like the most recent modern SpongeBob episode that I've watched because I refuse to watch the other ones. Have you Have you guys both seen uh, the Cabin in the Woods? I know of it, but I have not seen it. Yes. Well, okay. So I have seen. Okay, it. I won't. I won't spoil it. But just I'm just picturing. All of these like kids being released at once, anarchy just occurring, and that one little girl <laughs> from earlier is like frantically stabbing a guard <laughs> with like a prison shank, and it's just like, just kidding, I was in here. For murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, what have you unleashed? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, um, SpongeBob not wanting to be convicted of a crime twice, pulls the escape alarm uh, so the, the people of Glove World can be alerted of their escape. Um, so they... Boot liquor. Yeah, so they, exactly. So, a uh, glove liquor. So they follow the kid <laughs> who's... You glove liquor. Oh. <laughs> so they, uh, so Sp- SpongeBob and Patrick, like, chase after the kid. Uh, the, you know, the, ki- the little, like, jelly bean shaped kid who, like, ran away the first kid. So... Uh, we cut to a scene um, that like shifts from them running to uh, these two maintenance guys uh, who are like animatronic people. Uh, they're also underneath Glove World. They have the head of the animatronic and they put it up on like this table and they smack it to get it to work again. <laughs> Is this that scene from Alien? Are they doing the fucking scene from Alien where they talk to the android's head? I guess. I guess. This is insane. What is this? So what is this? <laughs> so the the animatronic now being like slapped back to reality, he is now capable of like cognitive speech, and he demands the mechanics not to go on break until his head is put back on his body. Um, also, he's he's British, and the mechanics make fun of him for this. So. What? <laughs> <laughs> So he you says, would think they'd be aware that one of their animatronics that it's their job to work on was British. <laughs> so he says something like, I forget what the animatronic like head says, but the guys turn around and I quoted it. He goes, okay, we'll get right on it. Govna. And then they start like laughing <laughs> and they leave. Oh my God. That's Henry, really how funny. hate crime do you feel right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm going straight to the ACLU with this one, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So the head is so upset that he falls to the floor into like a trash can and he swears the next time he sees Patrick, he will rip his head off in return. Oh my God. An eye for an eye and like a head for a Whoa. head. Whoa! This is FNAF now. Terrifying. Is it is. Yeah. So SpongeBob and Patrick chase the kid. They catch him. They're still underneath Glove World, uh, but they are lost now, and it's like an SCP, like, containment center, so they see scientists, like, walking around, and they follow them into the glove testing room, where they have this guy, like, strapped up, and he's got, like, the Glove World brand gloves on, and they zap him repeatedly, like, with these laser beams until he turns into, like, a Gordon's fish stick, and he... What? They killed this man. <laughs> but but oh this, no. So wait, this is this is just the scene from Escape from Tomorrow, <laughs> where they're down in the like a, a secret lab under the Epcot orb. <laughs> we like to call this part of the park Unit Seven Three Fun. <laughs> <laughs> they were, it's, there's just the oh, scientists man. every 
everywhere. They got this poor guy in a testing room. But but uh, don't be mistaken. The one thing that did survive is when they removed the gloves from like this guy's crispy body. His hands are still intact, and they're all cheering, going, "Wow, cool! The gloves can withstand like futuristic zappy weapons." So they. I, I have to ask, Zoe, oh. do we ever see that guy okay again, no. or have we actually just seen a man be killed by a bunch of evil scientists? You see, in for science, you see a man get killed for science. What the fuck? <laughs> what is the glove world needs to be shut down? <laughs> like, they got big plans. No, Gus. but here's the thing: you'd probably say like. Hieronymus Glove, you've gone too far. And he goes, I'll kidnap a thousand children before I let this theme park die. (laughs) (laughs) And I'll turn anyone who gets in my way into a fish stick. Why couldn't we have gotten... Fuck 20 minutes. This should have been a feature length. People need to know. Yeah, this is fucking... This is fucking cinema. There are there are layered references here. They really, I could not have been saddled with like a better one. Also, they were. It must also be said this adds really <laughs> sinister undertones to the previous glove. World it does. Episode. It does. Now that it, we know that there are really human does. experiments <laughs> and a child prison <laughs> beneath the thing. They, they, they. Not only that. My question is. <laughs> yeah. Why have these scientists not reached out to either Sandy or Plankton? I feel like this would be their jam. <laughs> I feel like Sandy would like bust this open. Like she's a little more ethical. Maybe in in earlier mark? SpongeBob, she gets kind of weird sometimes. It's one of those things where I feel like SpongeBob as a whole has this view of science that is like it's done by weirdos who like hurting people. <laughs> <laughs> but they also think that of art, so like you know, I gotta. I... <laughs> it's just. <laughs> I should I should show my one coworker this episode um because they're going in for oh, uh, for like chemistry and in their chemistry class they made them watch Breaking Bad to learn how not to make meth. <laughs> what? Oh. Teaching that in and here's how you should actually Don't do, do it. it. <laughs> so they <laughs> So they go into um, guard glove. So they they're on a conveyor belt. They with the scientists. They go into this place called guard glove training, and they are saddled with like these like they they get put into these like metal um, Iron Maiden like outfits so they won't get like killed. And they announce they go release the glove monsters. <laughs> and these what? These scary not like, them. Glove oh no! Creatures with like sharp teeth start like trying to maul them all but you know they're wearing like these these metal outfits so they're safe uh a dude gets dragged off he's like tell my family i love them it's the the painting on the wall is like very squid game like it's like rainbow and cutesy and stuff oh my god oh my (laughs) god he's dragged off and we never see him again so the last thing that we are brought to is the sock world prototype um, oh, so that's their plan for expansion. Exactly. You know, if the foot guy Terrifying. is a lucrative market. Yeah. Um, this is this is what all the scientists <laughs> had to sign an NDA for. So they're in like Area 51 Glove World. It's the experimental prototype for Sock World. It smells really bad because it's socks. Uh, and SpongeBob and Patrick are thrilled. So they're like, oh my god, not we can spend more money not just at Glove World, but at Sock World. We love stinky socks, don't <laughs> you viewers? <laughs> Ghost written by Dan Schneider. <laughs> oh, oh no. My fuck. God. He's back. Oh God! I don't want to give any spoilers, but uh, no, never mind. We'll get to the foot when we get to him. Oh, I'm scared. Fun. All right. So, uh, moving on from that, <laughs> the the kid um <laughs> that they have with them, the the jelly bean kid, um goes missing again. And SpongeBob and Patrick like do this bit back and forth where they're like, "Oh my God, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Uh, bah, where'd he go?" <laughs> and um they. T- <laughs> They turn around, and the kid is running away um, into the, the maintenance room where the animatronic ones. Uh, um, so the kid gets into the maintenance room um, and then climbs into the headless body of the animatronic. 
uh, and starts to control it. This kid is just like the protagonist of a video game that's <laughs> happening parallel to this episode. Yeah, yeah, True. yeah. So he, um, th- so he's controlling this body. Uh, and remember that the the animatronic head is like still not attached to it. He's still in like a garbage can, I think. And uh, the um, mm. the kid in this body like ends up walking out, and SpongeBob and Patrick don't recognize it's the kid because like he's in this man's body. And they're like, "Oh, have a, have a good day, sir." And then they start searching the the animatronic room. Um, so they ask around if anybody saw the kid. Um, and as they're asking around, they realize, oh my god, we're in the maintenance room of, of, of Glove World. We're in Robot World! And they start, like, <laughs> dicking around, like, Robot World. And all of a sudden, they get interrupted by a big splash of water. And it's the kid in the robot body who just decided to splash them with water because he's an ass. <laughs> That's it! You shouldn't bring water into Robot World, kid. I, I mean, admittedly... They are under the water, so there is water kind of ambiently all around them, but still. We're getting really weird because they keep going beneath into further theme parks that are more and more farther away from gloves. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cinematic world universe, Pal World included. <laughs> they really are going to get to Pal World. We are. So we'll, we'll get there eventually. So um, they are interrupted by the splash of water. Uh, and SpongeBob and Patrick chase the kid out of the room again, uh, now realizing that it's like the kid in the body harassing them. So the robot head in the room sees this happen because he's still in the garbage can, and he sees Patrick and he says, again verbatim, "It's the blinking bloke that broke off me melon." <laughs> <laughs> it's the blinking bloke who broke off me melon. He's the reason why there's corruption in the world. <laughs> So he falls onto the floor out of like he's he's shaking so bad because he's so enraged. He like falls out of the floor and in uh, like onto the floor from the garbage can. And in the garbage can, there's like a robot glove. So he attaches his neck to the robot glove and starts like emitting a bunch of wires and static from his mouth as like he announces he will kill Patrick no matter what. And he's like, Man, he's, that sounds horrifying. He's like a head crab now. So, he... so, so it's become the thing now, in addition to <laughs> Ailey. Yeah, so <laughs> he crawls out of the room and um, it, it, like this glove pops in and does a bit like it, it breaks the fourth wall and, go, and goes, uh, Heronius glove robots actions don't reflect our company. Finger fun industries. Don't worry. We don't condone murder. And then the guy goes to like condone murder and, and kill Patrick. Also, I'm sorry. Finger fun <laughs> industries. <laughs> I, I think they've got a lot more to explain. I think they've got a lot more to explain than just the actions of one of their animatronics. <laughs> Murder is the least of their crimes at Finger Fun Industry. Yeah. Finger yeah. Fun Industry. Come visit her. <laughs> Never mind. That's too Don't finish done. that joke. All right. <laughs> So what happens now? Sp- SpongeBob. Oh, I know it's so engaging. So SpongeBob and Patrick <laughs> chase the kid in the animatronic body, um, and the animatronic head starts um, like messing with a power grid uh, to to like stall them out, I guess. And instead of just like turning out the power so it's dark, the entire underground tilts sideways. So SpongeBob and Patrick and the kid are thrust into this like fun slide, and they end up in a giant wash machine and get trapped inside why do they have that to wash the gloves and the socks oh makes sense okay yeah and sure, rethink keep 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 in line with with glove world come on <laughs> get with the goddamn get, get program. with the glove world program at finger fun industries <laughs> finger fun industries where we wash the gloves and the socks together but not so much that the socks become not stinky because <laughs> that's part of the selling point <laughs> oh, I'll I'll get to the the logistics of that in a minute, Gus. Don't you worry. So I'm worried. So SpongeBob and Patrick. <laughs> the lore is rich. <laughs> the the head the the robot head gets on top of the washing machine and it turns it on to kill them before saying yet again, let's see if these blooming bozos like this blinking blimey ride. So it starts spinning. 
and they go so fast they're like it's like a those amusement park rides that like hold you against the side of it you know because the momentum is so yeah, quick. yeah the, the like ones that just oh seems, like, yeah. Gravity and yeah, air yeah, yeah yeah uh carnival music plays those freak me out which i, I enjoyed the carnival music and then the washing machine opens up a trap door and they are spit out into a pile of socks. But they're warm and they smell good because they're right out of the dryer. Um, I'm just kidding. They smell Sock World nearby. This is the entrance to Sock World and it smells really bad. So, SpongeBob. It was only a matter of time until it got really fetishy. <laughs> I know. Why is it Sock World all of a sudden now? And also, wait. Like, there's Sock World now, but there was just, like, a weird detour into Robot World for no no <laughs> real reason. <laughs> because they had robots the in Glove World anyway. <laughs> there didn't need to be a Robot World. <laughs> it's, we're, it, we're world building. Literally. <laughs> Literally. We are building <laughs> multiple worlds. This has, like, this has, like, the energy of, like, like, anything could happen in this episode. It's got, like, big Lost episode vibes. It's like, and then they went to photorealistic eyeball world <laughs> and met Prunzel. <laughs> <laughs> Prunzel. Oh, oh my man. god. That's beneath Sock World. <laughs> you were saying, Zooey, how, so how does the Sock so World saga continue? So, um... So they en they enter Sock World. Uh, SpongeBob is holding the Jelly Bean Kid's hand as they look around, um, and Patrick finds the stink switch and turns off the stink. Um, but before <laughs> <laughs> that's oh very high God. concept. <laughs> Spider Man, turn off the stink. <laughs> turn off the stink. Oh God! Turn up the stink. <laughs> <laughs> so they um. <laughs> The, the, uh, so Spongebob turns around to the kid and is like, oh, cool, we can explore the, the sock world without it being stinky. And then he, as he turns around, he sees that uh, the kid is missing. Um, in Again, remember, they're wearing that robot body and they let they detach their hand so Spongebob would still think he's like holding his hand. So the kid starts to run amok in sock world. But because he ripped his hands off, uh, there's like sparks emitting from the robot like outfit, and he lights a sock animatronic band on fire. Uh, oh it starts God. burning. Um, chaos ensues. Patrick and SpongeBob run after the kid. The head runs after them. This whole like chase scene happens, um, and then SpongeBob exclaims, "There, the 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 soggy sock flume!" And then Patrick turns around, and that's like I guess where the kid is heading. And Patrick turns around and goes, uh, "The the first like in, in a very sweet, loving, eye batting way. The first time you called me your best friend was on the glove gloom." And they share like a little sweet hug together. Um, and Patrick oh, bats his fuck. eyes. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. told you, I felt it. My gaydar was strong from the beginning, I'm telling you. So <laughs> No, I'm getting no, I feel the connection. A, You're right. It's Spongebob, a real one, yeah. Patrick, something's happening. <laughs> it really is. And I'm guessing more is going to happen as they ride the soggy sock flume. Uh, yes, exactly. So they get on the sock flume, uh, and it's like Big Thunder Mountain. It's like a water ride, and they're in these socks. So the kid is in front of them, about to plummet. Uh, they're in the middle, and the head is behind them, uh, like, chasing behind them in the water. He literally bites their asses, and, like... <laughs> <laughs> of course! It's not a Spongebob episode until, like, asses are involved. In the modern-day no, Spongebob, yeah. gotta have asses getting bitten. Believe me, they'll come... I don't know whether to slap it, lick it, or bite it. Jesus! <laughs> Not the kissing booth reference. Henry sent me the the a singular like mini clip from his episode, and there is a very high deaf ass. So this is a running it's theme true. throughout the episode. <laughs> so better keep watching this episode of SpongeBob Boys if you want to find out <laughs> retention tricks one oh one. They leap out from the ride. Uh, they chase the kid in these giant sock carts and they go they're not going fast enough so spongebob turns around and looks at patrick and says P patrick we gotta save that kid no more playing footsie which confirms to me that this is a day of playing footsie no oh one has God. ever platonically played footsie <laughs> so no but i am impressed with patrick's ability to do so with no toes that is oh, true. Oh, God, you're right. 
<laughs> so we're in the final stretch, guys. So they get out of the cart and they confront the kid. But before they can get to him, the animatronic head um, rips the kid from his animatronic body and restores himself fully. So he's like his <gasps> full robot self now. And he threatens... Oh, Patrick's fucked. He is! So the animatronic like demands that Patrick hands over his head. And there's no the green knight now. There's no suspense because <laughs> Patrick just hands over his head, like he just. <laughs> oh my god! He just he pops his head off, and he hands his head over, and a game of hot potato ensues between them, and uh, Patrick. Oh god, so Patrick boots the animatronic head off the animatronic body, then he puts his own head on the animatronic body. Then the animatronic puts his head on Patrick's body. Wait, Patrick puts his head on the animatronic body? <laughs> yeah. And then the animatronic puts his head on Patrick's body. And then they battle each other. <laughs> it, it just, like, I guess... <laughs> what it, what, his body's fine. Two immortal souls locked in battle until the end of time. <laughs> what is happening? You really are immortal. Like, you can't dive in, in like, underneath Glove World. You really can't die. Yeah, yeah, they're in the yeah. anti-death anti field. It's God's blind spot. <laughs> it's the oh, it's the fucking immortality theme park from Rick and Morty season three, <laughs> the Whirly Durly. Oh my god. Oh, so as they oh. duke it out, um, here's the final twist: the real frozen Heronius glove comes out in a block of frozen ice, and he's like, "Okay, guys, <laughs> calm down." Uh, he's got, he, by the way, he's got, like, a comb over that's in the shape of a glove, too. Just thought I should mention that. <laughs> <laughs> and the ice block... Top tier character design. <laughs> the, the ice block Heronius is like, alright guys, relax, I'm the real Heronius glove. Uh, the robot's like, no, I'm the real Heronius glove! And then the ice block Heronius is like, no, I don't think so, wipe that guy's memory so he doesn't do more damage to my park. And they, they literally, oh they, they beat they like hit him Whoa. over at the head with a wrench. The animatronic turns back into uh, an animatronic again. Uh, so he's lost all memories of what happened. Um, and then he's escorted away. So his sentience is taken. And, <laughs> and so they, yeah. uh, after that, the, the real ice block Heronius is like, uh, anyway, I am the real Heronius Glove. I've been preserved down here for years. I am at your eternal service, SpongeBob and Patrick. Uh, be since you terrorized, like, since you were terrorized by our robots, which is not in our company uh, policy, you are released <laughs> from Glove Jail. You are pardoned. I am sorry. Um, SpongeBob and Patrick, <laughs> they're rejoicing. They're, that's not a word. They are rejoicing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they are all mm. repeating the word splendid amongst each other. And uh, for proving themselves of being kind and unselfish, uh, SpongeBob and Patrick um, inherit Glove World. Uh, like really so it's Willy Wonka yes, now yes, as well, yes. on top of everything yeah, else. It references the oh episode. Oh my god. Yeah, it's, it references the episode. Uh, and, but until they don't, until they don't inherit it because the ice block Heronius says, psych, I may be, oh, again, I had, I quoted so many parts from this. He says, psych, I may be cryogenically frozen, but I'm not a loony. So then a musical, <laughs> so then a musical number ensues. Patrick and SpongeBob have glove crowns. Uh, they sing about their victories. Uh, the kid runs away and the credits roll. And my favorite part in the credits is that the stock photos of the humans and, like, the initial weird, like, propaganda video of Glove World, uh, they were literally, they were, they're credited to Getty Images. Um, and that... That's so funny. And that's it. That's it. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's escape. They escaped from beneath Glove World. That is one of the most insane episodes I've ever heard. It's one oh of those my. things where, like, SpongeBob and Patrick have gone on many adventures, but, like, that one in particular... That has to be one where they like recall it, and they're like, "Yeah, that was that was that one was fucked up. We almost <laughs> didn't make it out of that far. one." A man was killed in a lab to test gloves. <laughs> they dedicated let's, a whole. Let's all agree to never be creative again. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is so true. They they like it's a, it it really is an epic. It really is a twenty two minute epic. Yeah, I can't imagine like what other untapped narrative potential is there in Glove World. This has to be its last appearance. What more could they do with it? <laughs> because we can't just act like it's a normal theme park now. <laughs> Well, there's a there's a secret robot world and a broken smelly sock world <laughs> and like a child prison and an evil lab where they kill people <laughs> to test gloves. It's and really big. A frozen head of a guy. This makes any weird secret about the Krusty Krab pale in comparison. Am I the only one <laughs> as a kid? Despite in the episode them saying that they are glove flavored, really wanted one of those like glove like Pez candies. I that, like, did came too. Out of glove <laughs> Me so too. Because they're alone. they're like I, like I pictured them as like that that like crumbly like like Necco wafer. Yeah, no, that they, they looked really tasty. Mm, it's mm. super weird. Oh god, there's this candy store that I went to when I was little, and they had like the the like question mark blocks from uh, uh, Mario, and in it they had like little like blocks that were like in the shape of it, and it, 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 that's how I picture the candy tasting. This oh. is a very specific memory to me, but, but in my head I'm like, that's what it tastes like. <laughs> this weird chalky. Now candy I want that one of these flavor. Mario candies. It's such a shame that Nintendo will never work with us now that we've endorsed Power, Power World. World. With this. Power World. God. <laughs> It's this is the most this is the most random thing, but there is this uh, there's this subreddit I love called R slash crackhead craigslist that is just the weirdest <laughs> shit people have found. And there was this uh fucking uh like gallon jug of milk that had the expiry date March tenth. So they shortened it to MAR 10, and someone was selling it for $300 <laughs> as limited edition Mario milk. Did anyone buy it? <laughs> That'll fucking send you straight to Bowser. <laughs> you will go to the lava world. So, before I get onto my first episode, Zooey, you, you're in another project not created by myself and Gus, but is actually extremely exciting. Um, unlike us uh, degenerates, you actually have worked with Nintendo. <laughs> Do you want to tell us a little bit about that I'm, so the audience at home know the That's very true. Knowledge? After my endorsement of Pal World, they're going to remove me from the game. <laughs> <laughs> You're patched out. <laughs> you yeah, they got to they gotta, they gotta exactly. delete the, uh, the announcement post on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Shige Shigeru Miyamoto, uh, avid SpongeBob Boys watcher, it turns out. <laughs> It's true, it's true. But you know, please, tell us a little bit about the game, Zoo, before we move on to the piece of cursedness I've got in store for everyone. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, so there's this game um, called, uh, it was just uh, spoken about in the, I think the partner program portion of the Nintendo Direct, and it's called Another Crab's Treasure. You play as uh, Krill, uh, this little hermit crab who has gotten their uh, shell repossessed by ocean law <laughs> and the game <laughs> i'm doing a terrible job summing this up i'm just really excited right now <laughs> and uh it is really exciting it is a, they call it a, a yeah uh, no it's super cool they call it a shells like um because it plays kind of like a souls like uh and you uh are eventually you're you're going through the game you get to battle a bunch of bosses um there is a narrative to it there's a bunch of like characters you get to meet uh and the whole point of the game is you are trying to uh get your shell back um and get some treasure uh under the sea with the crab <laughs> And and who plays the main character again? <laughs> <laughs> I, One Zooey LaFou. <laughs> I One Zooey LaFou is the crab. I'm Krill. I'm the little crab. And when we were recording, um, when I had done the re recording session, uh, I did not um, be like believe that I actually had the part because we recorded the, the game. They they called me back for like a uh, like a callback, and I was thrilled. I was like, oh my god, oh no way! So I I did the callback, and we ended up like recording the entire game. Um, but no one like ever like verbally confirmed that like I had the role so i just thought the entire like game was just a test so by, by the end of it i was like oh this is awesome and i got off the call and i was like wait we recorded the whole game oh my god and then i ate a bunch of like these knockoff lemonade girl scout cookies in my celebration 
<laughs> so that was that's my oh, tale. No, that's so it was rad. it was very fun. Um, the the people that I uh, did the live session with were, were very sweet. Um, this is a really cool indie uh, studio um, that uh, I just r- very high praise. They're very fun. They're very nice. They're very silly. They have uh, they have a, a suit of krill that they brought to uh, a convention <laughs> with <laughs> that I would pay a million bucks for to have. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I'm 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 very excited. It's releasing April twenty fifth of this year 2024 hell yeah so another crab's treasure releasing april 25th for the nintendo switch yeah and uh xbox uh, xbox game pass i believe i also steam oh hell which i have so i'll be in a oh my gosh play yay! It, which will be super surreal so yeah i'll probably play that on my switch uh i love the art style and like uh souls like games are, are pretty fun to me so like it's a combination that i haven't seen before uh, i'm interested in it yay so if you're a real gamer this april 25th <laughs> another crab's treasure put that on your list yay! put it in your ears you will hear zooey <laughs> Are you ready for the, a weird SpongeBob, SpongeBob Boys episode? endorsement? <laughs> yeah, the rare SpongeBob Boys, which some people have likened to a curse. Oh no! What do you mean? What did you do to me? <laughs> yeah. They say that being endorsed by SpongeBob is kind of like being the first guy to go into Tutankhamun's tomb. No! <laughs> <laughs> no! I'm like, yeah, do, I'm you, dissolving. If you get too many endorsements from us, you get Shibuya incident. <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm dissolving. You are my special. I'm turning to <laughs> dust. <laughs> Even Zoe's Gojo-esque powers cannot uh, cannot withstand it. So, speaking of magic and of things being sealed in things, are you ready for oh, another no. episode no. of SpongeBob? Yes. <laughs> so, no, no, we're not ready. We can never be ready. But what is the episode? <laughs> this is the first half of season eleven, episode three. Spin the bottle. Oh no, not the t- <laughs> <laughs> Well then. Okay. So before we begin, I'm going to ask first you, Zooey, and then Gus. Okay. In one sentence, what do you predict this episode will be? Zooey, go. Oh god. Um, well, this comes before my Escape from Beneath Glove World episode, so I don't think Patrick and SpongeBob are able to play Spin the Bottle together as they're not yet dating. So this will be a... It's true. Yeah. That hasn't been made canon yeah, yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, oh God. I don't know. They're in a theme park ride spinning the bottle and they got to kiss the park attendant or something. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Very theme park. Unlucky um, zap it lands on. Not quite, on. but close. <laughs> Gus, what is your speculation? I have two guesses. Uh, one is more of a, like, it, maybe this involves a ship in a bottle in some way. But my other guess is, and this is less likely to happen, but not as unlikely as I would hope, uh, a Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward sleepover episode, and it gets weird. (laughs) So, would either of you have guessed Plankton is pretending to be a genie to get the Krabby Patty secret form? (laughs) Why is it? Why? (laughs) Why would he do that? Why? What is he on? Plankton, what dude? Does he get powers? Bro. Does he say she a kazing? He, he says weird things in this episode. He says magic words. So That's good. Right. That's all we, I wanted. We begin in the chum bucket with this ornate, uh, very genie-esque bottle. After, like, kind of traditional, like... Well, here's the thing. I don't know if it's traditional Arabic music playing over the uh, the opening titles, but what I will say is, it is the exact music they would play over an establishing shot of somewhere in Arabia in an Indiana Jones oh, movie. Oh no! Ah, oh, I God. see. Yeah, that that so, flavor. Oh no! That probably puts a mental image, and the, this this ornate bottle rolls towards Karen. And she picks it up. There's a like a puff of purple smoke, and Plankton climbs out of it dressed as a genie, <laughs> which is to say, he's wearing like MC Hammer parachute pants, oh. a fake beard, and a turban. Maybe a little bit racially insensitive. <laughs> I don't think this is gonna work, Plankton. Not just the Plankton. plan, all of this. Yeah. All- <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plot of the episode, Plankton gets cancelled. My god, <laughs> rough start. Rough start. <laughs> to be fair, it is the law of enter that bad episodes begin in the Krusty Krab. This is beginning in the Chum Bucket, so you know that at the very least, it will be the opposite of bad. Will it? <laughs> or something worse. Will it? I, I, I deeply admire, I was going to say, I deeply admire your optimism. So I don't. Even, even more stupid than this, <laughs> on the face of it, is the nature of Plankton's plan. His plan is that he will get the bottle to Mr. Krabs. He will pretend to be a genie, convincing Mr. Krabs. He will then break the bottle he was in, and Mr. Krabs will instead contain him within the bottle that contains the Krabby Patty secret formula. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that is the. That is. That is incredible. No! No, Plankton! No! <laughs> very, huh? Like, Karen should just be like, we're not doing this one, actually. <laughs> Any of this! <laughs> <laughs> and Plankton's like, but so, the kids are watching! They already wrote the script! <laughs> it's happening! So, we have to do this episode the for SpongeBoys! <laughs> To talk about. Karen does Karen does try to dissuade him with a quote that goes unreasonably hard for this episode. <laughs> I wrote it down. Yeah. Um uh, she says to him, keep messing with that old crabs, and the only container you'll need is an urn. <laughs> really... You're going to die, Sheldon! <laughs> It's like, what does she know about Mr. Krabs that we don't? Be mobbed up? Him, him and Plankton and they're like, Yeah, criminal. does he have connections? Yeah. Mr. Krabs is wired into a real mean syndicate operating out of Shell City. <laughs> you don't want to fuck with him. They move a lot of product through the Krusty Krab. Oh my god, I didn't realize Krabs was one of the five names. Yeah. Oh my god. Just thinking... There's this idea of this is why the burgers have gotten worse over the seasons, because that's no longer how the Krusty Krab makes money. It's like a Los Poyos Hermanos situation. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, exactly, exactly. Does that mean Saul Gilman really does oh exist? He, he really does exist! <laughs> he really is. This is so fucked up, but we're Mike, we wait! So we can say this. Mike Urban Trout! <laughs> <laughs> He's a- <laughs> I didn't even- I didn't even have to change it! Oh God. <laughs> please, Jonathan Banks, please cameo oh, in SpongeBob. Oh my God! My Holy trap. shit! Holy shit! That snuck up on me, I almost threw up. Oh I'm, my God. I'm just, I'm just thinking about, like, SpongeBob, for whatever reason, refusing to, like, do the Krabby Patties, and Mr. Krabs just slashes Squidward's throat with a box cutter, and it's just like, get back to work. Oh my god. Yeah, well, that's the thing. If we saw the title card, Breaking Bob, we knew, we would know exactly what we're in for. Please, SpongeBob guys, let us write this episode. Yeah, hire us. Hire the SpongeBob boys to write an episode. I'm I'm now just picturing just in this weird uh, fever dream AU we've cooked up, plankton with a sniper rifle from the chum bucket, like firing at the different employees, and Mr. Krabs like standing, team holding <laughs> in the path of the bullets, so he'll stop shooting. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. Oh my god. Anyway. It's, so. Wait, 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 wait. Squidward is Walt and SpongeBob is Jesse. <laughs> That's why Squidward is bald. He's got cancer. <laughs> He's got Squidward. incurable squid cancer. Squidward. Oh. I am the one who knocks. <laughs> oh, Squidward does have roles in this episode, and it, it, it is strange. So, okay. Um, Plankton gets into uh, the bottle and rolls his way to Mr. Krabs' house and the front door opens and Mr. Krabs steps out you know, like, five o'clock shadow looking tired, he yawns 
and he reaches off to the side, his arm stretching, and you see him grab a paper, like a newspaper, and then it zooms out to reveal he is stealing the paper out of the hands of his neighbor. And oh my he pulls God. it out of his neighbor's hand. And then his other hand goes in and steals the neighbor's like mug of coffee as well. <laughs> and he just skulls the mug. Is like wo- like woken up, goes to his normal character design, and then walks away, just kicking the bottle down the street. He literally cannot spend money at any time for any reason. He has to just <laughs> fleece everyone. It's a piece of shit, that Mr. Crab. <laughs> Oh man! Oh but God. he's also accepted that the bottle is his. He's just kicking it along. He's like taking what it with is... him. I no, guess. the the bottle doesn't even register because he gets to the Krusty Krabs where uh SpongeBob is sweeping, and he kicks the bottle over to SpongeBob and is like, "SpongeBob, throw out the trash!" Oh come on! And yeah, I know it's it's a weirdly like you'd think he'd at least see some resale value in quite an ornate bottle. But as he's walking yeah. into the Krusty Krab, you see the inside of the paper. And I wrote this down because I was like, why, why put that in there in a legible way when the rest is squiggles? Um, just the inside mm. of the paper just says school dropout rate soars. What? What? What is this in reference <laughs> is to? Is this social commentary? I guess there's just an illiteracy <laughs> epidemic in Bikini Bottom. I guess so. Does this come up again in the episode? No. <laughs> okay. It's a weird little That's Easter egg right. for freaks like me That's... who rewind and pause. Because oh. like it's not even bizarre. like it's not a joke. Oh. It's not a pun. It's just oh, I guess that's in in the news in Bikini Bottom today. I guess. So SpongeBob picks the bottle up and he's gonna throw it in the trash, but um, he looks how nice it is. And he takes it back to his house, and he starts playing with it with Gary, who, like, hits it with his eye stalk. <laughs> which, which is peculiar. Uh-huh. And then, at a point, Spongebob realizes it might be a genie lamp, and he starts intensely rubbing it while going, like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Uncomfy. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and... No. So, th- th- this bottle, for context, has, like, a round bottom and a really long stem. And he's uh-huh. holding it at an angle when he's intensely rubbing it and moaning. It's the two-fisted fun ride at Club yeah. <laughs> he's, he's taking some yeah. noise from Finger Fun <laughs> Industries. Oh, man. can we, can there just be a normal episode of this show again, please? No. <laughs> and all and all of you people in the comments, because there's at least one of you every time who's like, I don't see it. You guys just have filthy minds, <laughs> and it's like I'm. <laughs> you're in danger. Be more aware of what's happening around you. <laughs> It's true. They can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> there, there's my so, Breaking Bad reference. There we go. So SpongeBob's vigorous rubbing causes the bottle to heat up to the extent that it's burning plankton inside it, and he pops out of the top like charred with smoke coming off him, and is like, "Alakazam! It is I, a genie." Plankton doesn't need to follow the rules of being a genie just because that's part of the plan. He had a very specific heist in mind, and SpongeBob <laughs> wasn't part of it. But the thing is, he then goes, as a genie, I command you to take me to your boss. And SpongeBob is like, no, Mr. Genie, that's not how genies work. I get three wishes. And um, Plankton is like, okay, then what are your wishes? And SpongeBob goes, well, I wouldn't wish myself. That'd be selfish. I'm going to let my best friends have a wish because friendship is a kind of magic. And Planton just goes, oh, I'm going to be sick. (laughs) My little genie, 
my little jeans. It's 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 pretty classic, but you can already see how there were certain holes in this genie plan <laughs> from the beginning. Yeah, especially yeah. especially because Plankton just doesn't know what a genie is. He thinks it's a thing where it's like I come out of the I come out of the lamp and then you grant me wishes. <laughs> yeah. That's what he thought. He thought he like got the concept backwards. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a shit deal. Yeah, it's like it's like a pizza man calling you up at like like, <laughs> like midnight. And it's like, hey man, you want some pizza? Because we got some. No, no, it's like a pizza man calling you up in the middle of the night and being like, bring me a pizza. You gotta drive to me. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, cook bring a pizza, pizza to me. home and bring it down to the store for me. <laughs> <laughs> to the pizza restaurant that doesn't serve pizza. It just <laughs> orders it always from random people. <laughs> this is a peculiar business model. So... <laughs> <laughs> this so, has to be one of the worst plans Plankton's ever done. Like, <laughs> like being real, being real. This is like one of the most tenuous. Like, like he literally cannot ruminate. He cannot discern the hypothesis. He is a, he is sad, a sad clown. clown. <laughs> no, it's true. This is peak. Like, okay, the episode idea is: what if Plankton had to pretend to be a genie? We can't think of a good reason why. Let's just gloss over it and get into the fight. <laughs> we are we already spent the advance for the genie plankton episode. <laughs> we have to just make something. We, we spent the advance on all those pizzas we brought for this guy who keeps falling. We We're going into crippling debt for... because he won't stop asking <laughs> for pizza. pizza. And we have to make it. <laughs> I think he may just be a member of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle <laughs> with a fake mustache. <laughs> I always deliver it straight to a manhole in a back alley. Exactly. Oh, oh also, a little thing I forgot um, before we, we go off to the three wishes, because uh, I wrote this down. When SpongeBob sees that, uh, that there is a genie, he gets so excited his own face comes out of his mouth and, like, supplants the previous face. It's a normal cool. thing that happens I'm when glad I'm he can do that. Very, um, Hexus <laughs> coded. <laughs> Good for him. Don't make fun of him. Okay. <laughs> toxic love. SpongeBob first goes to Squidward, speaking of toxic love, and is like, hey, I've got a genie. Uh, he, he can grant you a wish. And Squidward is skeptical, but goes, okay, I wish for a golden clarinet that always plays beautifully. And Plankton is like, oh, it shall be done. <laughs> Throws some, like, purple spark powder, and Squidward just goes back inside. And you see Plankton in there frantically painting Squidward's clarinet gold. <laughs> Which is odd, because it's like, this plan was never contingent on Squidward believing he's a real genius. He's prepared! Yeah, like, this this full-on doesn't matter. Yeah, no, it's, it's bizarre. But Squidward is like, oh my god, a golden clarinet. Let me see. He picks it up and starts playing it, and it does play beautifully. But then it cuts to inside the clarinet. Plankton is frantically running up and down it, like, plugging different parts to make the music better. And he says, uh, I wrote this down. Good thing I spent that last summer in evil band camp. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say that Plankton's inside the clarinet playing another clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been an elite move. I would love that. <laughs> I mean, we know he can already play a harmonica and a keyboard. So... It it could be canon that he plays uh that he plays a tiny clarinet as well. <laughs> the fact is, Plankton is very talented. He just doesn't apply himself in the correct way. Cause again, what is this? SpongeBob and Squidward don't need to know that he's a genie. No, he's he's resourceful. He's a scientific genius. Basically, the one thing he can't do is run a successful restaurant, and yet that's what he decides his life should be. <laughs> He he probably should have just like went and found a real genie and wished for the formula. Like, oh my god! If he's you're gonna right. do anything with genies. Wait, 
<laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, wait, can, what? <laughs> is all I can say. Wait. All, oh, no. So Jeannie would perhaps say, all will soon be revealed. No! So, oh. the, the second wish is going to Patrick's house. And Patrick is naturally really racking his brain about what to do. Um, and he's like, okay, I've thought of my wish. I wish I could have a second head so I could have someone to talk to while you're at work. A second head of Spongebob or himself? A second of his own head on his body. So <laughs> Plankton is like, I'll make it happen. Close your eyes. <laughs> and he pulls out a Sharpie. And crudely draws Patrick's face on one of Patrick's hands. This must convince Patrick. <laughs> and Patrick too stupid to know that yeah, that's his I was, hand. Yeah, I was just about to say. That he's talking to. The weird thing is, Patrick goes, oh, you, you made it happen. You are a real genie. I will call you Noggin. Say hi to everybody, Noggin. And obviously the hand doesn't say anything. And he's like, Noggin, say hi. And Spongebob's like, really? It's okay. He doesn't need to. <laughs> And Patrick's like, no, Noggin, you're embarrassing me. Say hi. And he still doesn't. And SpongeBob's like, okay, I, I think I'm I think I'm just gonna go. And uh Patrick is like, yeah, that's for the best. Noggin needs to be taught a really painful lesson. <laughs> and he goes back under his rock, and you just hear like Noises of Patrick yelling in pain as, like, he is pummeled beneath the rock. What's with his possessive streak of violence? I don't know. He's, pa he's Patrick changed. Patrick is really violent in these episodes. He's changed. What happened? <laughs> he's never been the same since the accident. <laughs> what has he gone through? With that failed, they go to the Krusty Krab at long last and go to Mr. Krabs, who is doing, like, a word search in the paper... Like, he's still reading this fucking paper. Um, and Spongebob is like, oh, I've got this genie. I'm going to give you the last wish of the genie. And Mr. Krabs, like, knocks it over and is like, can't you see I'm doing work in here, child? Uh-huh. Yeah. And Spongebob begins to cry because oh he's God. like, oh, but it was a magical genie and I was going to give the last wish to you because you're one of my favorite people. Aww. And... Mr. Krabs is like, okay, fine, I'll humor you. I wish for a thousand dollars. How's he gonna get that? Plankton throws the dust and disappears. Cut to Plankton at the bank <laughs> going, I'd like to withdraw all my money, please. Well, you're, you, he's, he, what? What? He's giving his money to Did, Krabs? This is the dumbest. <laughs> that's what? terrible. <laughs> that, that's not a, Plankton doesn't do that. <laughs> yeah. He's so, he's yeah. out a thousand bucks on this genie plan. But now it's <laughs> what? <laughs> what the, he doesn't. Yeah, why? But, he couldn't even. He couldn't even be bothered to counterfeit the money. To steal it? We just. And, he doesn't. Part of, <sighs> he's, <laughs> he's giving a grand of his own savings to his worst enemy. Why would you do this? Oh my god! Wait, is this like an investment? Like, oh, once I get yeah. the. the Happy Babby formula, one thousand dollars. I spent. Like <laughs> yeah, that what? Yeah, yeah. It'll seem like chum change. <laughs> <laughs> it will seem like chum change. The thing is, he brings the money back, and Mr. Krabs is like, "Wow, it is a real genie." And he picks up the bottle and is like, "Well, you've had your three wishes now, so now I'll get my three wishes." But then Squidward tackles the bottle out of his hand and is like, no, these will be my three wishes. Then he goes outside <laughs> and Patrick tries to attack Squidward and get the thing and is like, I need a new noggin. <laughs> and Patrick is like, I had the shit beaten out of him by his own hand. Oh my God. And it just begins this kind of like violent war for the bottle during which... Uh, the, the clip I sent you both that will probably play on screen in a second. <laughs> Spongebob points out a penny on the ground. Mr. Krabs picks it up, puts it in a large coin slot on his back above his 
highly defined ass cheeks <laughs> and then turns to SpongeBob with a demonically over animated expression, live action fire in the background, and asks with a deep voice, like, give me that bottle. Crabs with the crab cake. He's got lots of crab cake. <laughs> Mr. That crab, crab is one thick bit. <laughs> It never, it Let never me. gets old, See sadly. <laughs> yeah. Awful. No, that, that is a truly bizarre moment. Uh, like, in an already confusing episode, Plankton, I don't know why you did this. Like, th- like, I feel like he should wake up at the end of this episode and be like, oh, it was all a dream, a very bad dream about my, a dumb plan I came up with. This, this episode gets weirder, though. It gets weirder, because SpongeBob grabs the bottle. And he's like, we need to settle this fair and square. Cuts to them all sitting on the floor of the Krusty Krab. They've piled up the tables and chairs in the corner. And uh, SpongeBob puts the thing down and is like, okay, we're going to play Spin the Bottle. And oh no, uh, the title. The, 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 the title! Is we, they we said it! It's the title! We, we spin it around, and whoever the bottle is pointing towards. Um, and Patrick goes, we have to kiss them. And then it cuts to SpongeBob and he's like, no, it'll like select who gets the bottle. <laughs> Cut back to Patrick, who is disappointedly putting a tube of lipstick away. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, Patrick. <laughs> Poor Patrick. Patrick. Patrick just wanted a kiss. So they spin it around and Plankton, who is like getting violently sick, in the spinning bottle, manipulates it so it lands on Krabs. Krabs grabs it and runs back into his office, and uh, Plankton like vomits out the top of the thing and then comes out and is like drunkenly like, "Oh, God, whatever wish you want." And uh, Mr. Krabs goes, "Okay, for my first wish, I want you to turn everything in the Krusty Krab into gold, even the negative space." What, what 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 do you mean by negative Whoa. space? As in like Does he mean like the water turning the air into gold? But th- th- they're gonna get entrapped! Oh my god! They're gonna get encased! That's not I, I Mr. Krabs, King Midas speedrun any percent. <laughs> yeah! yeah. Like, <laughs> Mr. Krabs would like modern day Mr. Krabs at least is like such a worse version of King Midas. But he'd be sitting around and just be thinking, man, I wish my daughter was made of gold. <laughs> Pearl, come in here! Pearl! <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, it, it wouldn't even be, like, it, like an ironic punishment. He'd get the power and then be like, oh, a whale's worth of gold. Pearls aren't as valuable a as gold. gold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was so good, man. That was a good one. Thanks. <laughs> oh, my God. Someone... Someone should make you play a crab. That was a really good line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe, maybe, someday, maybe someday. Maybe <laughs> someday. Nintendo, get on this. Nintendo, please. So, yeah. So the the episode ends with Plankton, like, is, like, so exhausted, he, like, rips off the disguise. Because obviously he can't turn everything in the Krusty Krab, including the negative space into gold so he's he explains his plan and mr Krabs is like wow that was a really stupid plan (laughs) and then an actual genie (laughs) comes into the room like (laughs) just a genie appears just no bottle no nothing he's just there he's just just coming to say hi no, he he comes in and he's like, "Hey, like, how ha- how dare you? Like, look look at what terrible condition you've uh like left my bottle in. This is the last time I lease it to someone while I'm out of town." And Plankton goes, "Oh, come on, you're insured." <laughs> Plankton, you knew a real genie the whole time. <laughs> Plankton, you could have asked. Plankton, Plankton. <laughs> You're a mess, buddy. You're 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 in a bad way. Oh my god! Why? Why? He's... Why? 
So, so then Squidward comes in and is like, hey, that's my bottle. And then Patrick comes in and is like, hey, that's my bottle. And the genie is like, well, since you all like bottles so much, he levitates an empty ketchup bottle out of the trash, shrinks Mr. Krabs, Squidward, um, Patrick, and obviously Plankton stays the same size, and he shoves mm. them all into the ketchup bottle and seals it on oh the ground God. as they're all like writhing together in it. He he made them into genies. No, <laughs> he just made them into little guys in a bottle. Yeah, they don't even have powers, so it extra sucks. Oh my god! Yeah, they don't have They're, the phenomenal they... cosmic power. They just have the itty bitty just living the itty space. bitty living space. <laughs> oh no! And then the genie also, disappears, also taking his get... real bottle with him. SpongeBob enters and is like, "Oh man, I guess the genie's gone." But you know what? I feel like I already have all my uh, wishes granted. Uh, the most magical thing of all is how close my friends are to each other. Then he sees the bottle on the floor picks it up, sees them all writhing in there, and is like, uh, this bottle of ketchup went bad, and throws it in the trash this, and leaves. This feels Episode like ends. a don't hug me, I'm scared. Does oh, that not, does. does that not feel like that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now let's all agree to never summon a genie It's again. like, it's like the, the pesky bee. Like at the end when he like smacks the the butterfly thing and it like turns all bloody at the end of the third episode Destroys on YouTube. It. Yeah. Yes. That is so bizarre. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was Spin the Bottle, one of the most like Okay, so we're not allowed to say the name, but all three of us here work together on uh writing for a bizarre children's show on YouTube. <laughs> so we get it, how sometimes when you're writing stuff for yeah. kids, it can go to weird places. <laughs> but, like, this sometimes, feels like something else, you, you gotta, know? Not like this. <laughs> like... Yeah, sometimes you just gotta write forward. So the episode's about Plankton pretending to be a genie. That that much is immutable. Keep going. Let's see what happens. Whether that means real genie, whether that means fake wishes, whether that means, like, just... Just keep on. Mr. Krabs has a coin slot in his back and can summon real fire. Why did he give away a thousand dollars? He is the devil. Why did he give away a thousand dollars? Why did he, he do that? He is the devil. Yeah, no, you, you, you're so right, Zooey, because Plankton is ending this a thousand dollars out yeah, he, to he Mr. Krabs. Get that back. The investment was worth nothing. Plankton, yeah. fool. Why? You are taking holographic meatloaf out of your wife's mouth. <laughs> I got some very bad news, boys. Oh boy, yeah. what is it? We've got a we've we've got another plankton episode oh next. Oh my god! <laughs> no! <laughs> It'll be a fusion. It's plankton goes to glove world. <laughs> no, welcome to Captain Pipsqueak. Oh no! The episode where plankton <laughs> becomes a supervillain. Oh, I was gonna say a pirate. And you might be thinking, but plankton's already a supervillain. Wait. Oh, no. What? So Captain Pipsqueak begins with Karen slicing pickles in the chum bucket, uh, which is one of the few times we ever see them prepare food in the chum bucket. <laughs> and she is chopping up the pickles with robot arms and doing, like, squid words like la-da-dee, la da do, la da dum for some reason. It's just a very popular tune in Bikini Bottom. Uh, and then the wall explodes <laughs> as uh, Mr. Krabs has just blasted Plankton back to the chum bucket. <laughs> Through unknown means, because he's just standing there on the other side of the street. I guess he cast a fireball or something. Mr. Krabs' his arm is mint. He, and he says, he, he literally calls Plankton a hot mess. <laughs> But my and brain says is that, so like, he'll broken. never get the formula. Oh, my God. I, I'm so fucked up. I thought you were going to say, he literally calls Plankton a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Plankton, you're a stupid hoe, and you'll never get me formula. <laughs> Actual dialogue from the episode. No. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, like, Krabs, Krabs says that, calls him a hot mess, puts a little stank on it, and then Plankton starts, like, you know, just, like, weeping and crying. Uh, with with a little stank, he's like, it's not fair. I need the formula so bad. 
And, um, you know, Karen is, like, you know, trying to, like, calm him down. She puts, like, a cucumber on his eye, uh, like a spa treatment, which he eats. Um, so <laughs> he doesn't really understand that concept either. Um, and then I forget how he gets the idea. Oh, Plankton is watching Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy on TV. And he sees... Man Ray and the Dirty Bubble and two other randos who I will describe <laughs> torturing Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy and you have like a like you have like a weird like like green Larry the Lobster looking guy who I don't think is says he, Jumbo he has shrimp? very few lines Jumbo Shrimp Oh he is Jumbo Shrimp they just changed his design He's a, he's a, a, a deep law mermaid man and barnacle boy villain. <laughs> Not quite as deep law as a hoodoo guru the voodoo villain who we discussed oh, in Some yeah. Poor Boys poor, in the Multiverse poor of Patrick. Title. What the fuck is that? He's very racially insensitive. Yeah, I was about to say just by the name. <laughs> who yeah. inexplicably who thought that was a good and... idea. <laughs> Bubble Bath wants to hang him. That's and... canonical. <laughs> Oh my god! What? And in considering that Hoodoo Guru, the voodoo villain, is a product of Bubble Bass's imagination, uh, it says a lot about how he Bubble Bass's worldview. Holy fuck. That he dreamed that up as the bad guy. Oh yeah. my god! Let, um, let's be real. If Bubble Bass isn't like a Channa, nobody is. Jeez. Oh, it's true. It's true. At the very um, least, he's on some so, of the more yeah. unsavory subreddits. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah. He's on he's on fucking 16 chan. <laughs> like he's on some otherworldly shit. Oh my God. But so we've got Man Ray, the Dirty Bubble, a uh, new design Jumbo Shrimp, and then we've got a like yellow slug with spikes and uh <laughs> she talks in kind of a all right, let's go do some evil, you guys. <laughs> She's my favorite sort of already. Thing. I love her. I love weird voice spiky slug. I ended up having to take a trip to the wiki. Uh, I can't be bothered to know her, like, know her name, but off the top of my head, I remember reading that it was, like, Notodorus or something. <laughs> of all the names you... Notodorus is here. Notodorus. <laughs> joined the it. League of Villains. <laughs> Notodorus. Uh, but, but, yeah, so Plankton sees them, and he goes, oh, I love it when the bad guys get the upper hand. Wait a minute, if I join them, they can help me get the formula. Okay. And so he decides he's going to become a supervillain, and he tries out a few little gimmicks. Uh, he first puts on a clown outfit. Oh, yes! He's the Joker! The pie blows up in his face. Yeah, he tries. It doesn't work out. Uh. Um, the pie blows up in his face. He's like, well, I'm not going to be a clown then. Uh, and then he comes out <laughs> as like a purple version of himself. So he's like, he's like doing venom. He's like, he's venom. And I never knew what hit him. He's hit you with the venom. Oh, God. Uh, he doesn't like that one either because his teeth pop out. You know, he, he, he ends up, you know, morbing all over himself. So he, he oh, gives up God. on that one really quick too. So I, I just, sorry, I have to start you for one second because I'm just sitting here yes. thinking like, this never occurred to me as a kid, but weirdly this episode has made me think of it. Like, what level of reality are Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy <laughs> operating <laughs> on? That's a really, really good question. Are they human? Yeah, because well, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're human. They were in a TV show <laughs> yeah. about them fighting crime, but all of their villains are real and also not old. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, wait, what? I, yeah, I, I'm... Uh, oh, I'm thinking... Oh, my brain. They aged ah. out of the world of their show, and like, but it remained, but it's part of reality. It just overlaps with it. Well, it's because if you check the flight logs, uh, Man Ray spends a lot of time beneath Glove World in, uh, in the children's section. <laughs> I think we should maybe <laughs> have the FBI look into him. He's a villain in more ways than one, that Man wait. Ray. Okay, wait, the Atomic Flounder did get older, and actually, Man Ray can be explained because they cryogenically froze him. Oh, true, in Tartar Sauce. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. So he was he was locked in there from the olden days, and, and the, the dirty, dirty bubble. bubble I can imagine just being routine. immortal. Yeah, <laughs> all that. Because well, because he he dies a lot. You know, he gets popped a lot and then comes back. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, Jumbo <laughs> Shrimp. He he's he's been around. He's still kicking. And uh, Noto Doris is obviously one of the newer villains that has joined them. Lover, um, lover. It, it says a lot about the way the uh, SpongeBob writers think and see the world that when they're thinking of names for a slug, like th their brains are so wired towards feet that the first thing they think is, oh, she'll, she'd have no toes. Maybe that would be her identity. <laughs> No toe, Doris. No, it's not. It's 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 no toe, like N O T O D O R S. Oh. Not. I was oh, thinking of Notre that's... Dame. I was thinking of Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> we totally, totally you both different. Went in wildly different directions with that. This is this is a complete litmus test for our minds. <laughs> We are oh we are God. not even at the foot part of the episode. You guys, no. can there's skills. there is one. Gus, <laughs> yo, there is one. You I better believe. Anyway, oh God, uh, Plankton's final supervillain costume that he goes with is like a like a pink Magneto helmet and cape. He's like he's little Magneto man. He goes into the bad part of town to get to the supervillain lair which is, like, inside of a dumpster or a sewer lid or something. But he, like, goes down into this, like, secretive underground lair. He is let in by the doorman, who is Dennis from the SpongeBob movie. <laughs> Presumably, for recent events, not played by Alec Baldwin. <laughs> uh, yeah, and also, presumably, well before Plankton hired him. Maybe this is, like, the first time they met. Oh, yeah, because didn't they say that the movie takes place canonically at the end of the series? Yeah, yeah, I I think that's, I I think think that's so. the truth of this matter, is that Plankton, through this adventure, found out about Dennis and chose, of all people, to hire him for, for, his, uh, for his Plan Z. Naturally. Anyway, the cameos do not end there, because oh, Plankton has walked into an audition for a new member of the group because apparently everyone wanted to try out to be part of the the to be part of evil which every still stands for every lemons. villain is lemons they say it i love that <laughs> they say it at one point so on the stage trying out are a bunch of shameless cameos many of which i did not recognize but let me tell you some of the ones i did here we go there is a viking from the Dear Vikings episode. There Ola. is the Tattletale Strangler. <laughs> I mean, he straight up kills people. I think he should be allowed in. <laughs> yeah. There is a uh, Prawn, who is a villain from Battle for Bikini Bottom, the video game. And this is the first time he's appeared in the show. Really? That's wild. There is uh, Doodle Bob is here. Oh my He's god, Doodle from... Bob! <laughs> Doodle Bob Nothing. is canonically dead. How did they bring him back? No, no, let him live, let him live. I love him, let him live. <laughs> <laughs> let me have <laughs> this. <laughs> Was he your favorite character, Zooey? <laughs> <laughs> me noi, me noi. <laughs> I think all No, that's the time. what he's doing. He's running around and going nyoi 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 nyoi. <laughs> just he's like running around on stage and doing that. Does everyone else here periodically think about that joke where SpongeBob and Patrick are climbing out of the hole and Doodle Bob draws a bowling ball, throws it in, Patrick's head becomes a bowling pin as it approaches. <laughs> yes! It like yes! shatters the pins, falls down. SpongeBob is like, "Are you okay down there?" And Patrick just yells, "Finland!" Up from inside the hole. <laughs> oh, it's my a God. real good one. It's a quality one. That episode. <laughs> That's one of the best episodes. Honestly. Calm down, yeah. dude. It's just a drawing. <laughs> but yeah, so Doodle Bob's here. Um, I have hazy memories of this character. Maybe being mentioned in a Spongebob boys, but there's like a weird purple wrinkly lady who is named Madam Hagfish. I'm looking at I guess up. she's around. She's like a deep lore Spongebob Let me, person. Let me have a look. I want to see Madam Hagfish. Oh my God. Madam, ha I, Madam Hagfish, Encyclopedia Spongebobia. 
<laughs> that's <laughs> that is what the website is oh, called. Oh, she's horrible. Yeah, she's horrible. A horrible lady. She was born in 1840. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I'm losing. She was pl- sorry, sorry. No, I'm sorry. In her first episode, she appeared in, which was called "The Curse of the Hex." She was played by Kristen Wiig. What? Wow. Yeah. So Madam Hagfish is on the stage, and a number of these other ones, um, like the the mechanical mantis, who will come up later. Uh, they're all like previous minor villain episodes, uh, most of which make me feel fucking so old I could turn to <laughs> dust, much like a caveman in Night at the Museum. Yeah. <laughs> back. Back. Speaking of things that make me feel old, uh, Nosferatu is on this stage as well. No way! He was so funny the first time, he... and they just keep milking him. They run him <laughs> into the ground! Um, Squidward is also trying out to become a villain. He is dressed in a costume that is apparently called Mr. Negative, because Squidward's been a supervillain in other episodes, and that is all I know it about why wait, he's there. Isn't Mr. <laughs> Negative a, a character from Spider-Man? Wasn't he, like, the villain in that first PS, uh, whatever, Spider-Man game? I'm looking it up. Uh, he he it is, Mr. he Negative? is, yeah. Was that not, like, a SpongeBob villain in, like, episodes past because if i'm not mistaken wasn't squidward uh the uh volcano guy in the like league of super acquaintances that yells krakatoa so he has had a proper villain arc for once being a hero yeah he's he's playing both sides and he's standing in the same room as like you know murderers and evil scientists and vikings and alternate dimensional 2d abomination of spongebob zooey have we found anything on mr negative no i just i looked up mr negative spongebob and like nothing comes up hold on I he's a ghost out of it. mr mr negative spongebob the only thing yeah. that comes up is like Someone drawing on DeviantArt, um, someone drew a drawing of Squidward called Dr. Negative? Oh, <laughs> wait, I'm, wait, I think is. I got the name wrong. Oh, wait, great. no, there is, there is. Squidward oh. got a doctorate. Good for him. Yeah, yeah, it, it, Dr. Negative is uh, legally distinct, I think, from Mr. Negative. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> in, a, in, in a sort of Powell World fashion. Yeah. Uh, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, so anyway, Plankton comes in, and like we see all these people chattering, doing their thing on the stage, and uh, Man Ray goes, oh, quite a rogues gallery we have here. He doesn't sound like Man Ray used to. It's, you know, obviously. Because they guy, haven't been like able to bring back team. John Reese davis But yeah, so Man Ray's like, I'm going to pick from among you the one I think is the best villain, and uh, I pick Nosferatu, which, like, yeah, fair play, good choice. He's got experience. Yeah. Uh, Nosferatu is delighted to be selected, but then the Tattletale Strangler pushes him out of the way and goes, hey, I should be the one. I was the one who got here first. And Man Ray goes, nope, no, not you. And <laughs> pulls out a laser gun and shoots and evaporates the Tattletale Strangler. So the Tattletale <laughs> Strangler is dead? You think these are the same evaporate yes. weapons from the um, Beneath the Glove World? You think they're the same <laughs> brand? <laughs> you think this Maybe, is all yeah, the connected? Technology. <laughs> and so Glove World's literally selling to supervillains now? Oh my god, this place <laughs> needs to be shut down. <laughs> It's just like the real Disney Corporation I, at this I gotta point. Look it up too. I, I am I am looking up the Tattletale Strangler on uh, Encyclopedia Spongebob here to see if it lists him as deceased. <laughs> Please find out. All right, let, let's see. All right, I'm on there. I'm on there. Latest appearance, friend anniversary, brief cameo. Uh, what is this episode called? Captain Pipsqueak. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was his last appearance in an episode. And his entry just ends with Man Ray shoots the struggler with his laser gun, evaporating him into ashes. So I read that just dead. Read that? Yes. He's dead. He's dead. And you know what else? You know what else? Man Ray is like, all right, Nosferatu, now that you've been selected, show me what you've got. And they play the piano, and Nosferatu does like weird poses and a weird dance, and it looks He's especially voguing. strange because they're like. He's Vogue. They're, yeah, they're creating like Vogue poses 
for Nosferatu that like aren't from the movie. Like it's very strange. Manry's not having it, so he kills Nosferatu as well. <laughs> oh my god! Again. Please tell me Doodle Bob is okay. <laughs> Please. So the thing about Doodle Bob is that he didn't get this far in the audition, meaning that like they just kind of let him go home. Oh my god! Thank God. <laughs> he was like oh. done. And then yeah, he's, he's alive. Oh, thank Our boy God. is alive, yeah. Then the third one gets up, and it's the robot Mantis. And apparently, he, I, I guess he's something the kids remember. But he, he does this bit where he's, like, mad about the piano music. So he, like, smashes the piano, uh, but the woman playing it um, immediately, like, the piano, like, its spare parts turn into a drum set or something, and then he smashes it again, and it becomes another instrument, and then it becomes a smaller instrument, and he keeps, like, breaking it down until it's a tiny harmonica, and then he smashes it one last time, and then the lady's just like, aw. <laughs> like, she's just upset. What a weird joke. And then, and then Man Ray says, like, yeah, and then Man Ray says, like, hey, we, we put down such a huge deposit on that piano and kills the mantis with the gun. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Man Ray just m massacre Ray. Yeah, killing people with rays. So after seeing all of this, uh, Plankton remembers he's in the episode and gets back on, he gets onto the <laughs> stage and goes, uh, I'm actually a, a really cool villain. I've got a super powerful intellect and... I'm going to get the Krabby Patty secret formula, and once I have the formula, I'm going to rule over the apocalypse that will result from me having it. I mean, he does um, do that in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's the thing. He's describing Plan Z, but, you know, Dennis appearing here, being alive and all, confirms that this is, like, well before it actually... So he's got nothing to prove that he can actually do this, but Man Ray's kind of into it. He's like, all right, yeah, you can... You can start being in the group. Uh, we're going to call you Captain Pipsqueak. Plankton's like, okay, cool. We can workshop that, right? But he gets accepted, and they immediately start hazing him. Oh, my God. Wow. This is weirdly not even the only episode where Plankton's plan was just get Man Ray to do it. But in the other one, <laughs> he had Man Ray go to the Krusty Krab. He orders Krabby Patties, gets addicted to them, ends up becoming, like, massively fat, and then I think just leaves. And that's the whole episode. Well, that sounds like a very not fetishy episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like that because it's really funny and clever. Uh, of course. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pissed because Captain Pipsqueak would have been, like, a great... This would have been, like, a great pirate episode. Like, Captain yeah. fucking Blackbeard. No, yeah, it's yeah. true. Like, and, and pirates make more sense. Yeah. But yeah, so now Captain Pipsqueak, he's part of evil. Every villain is lemons. They have to get it in there. They have to say it. And they send him to Weenie Hut Jr. because they have to get it in there. They have to say it. Oh, God. Um, and they're like, we need some food from Weenie Hut Jr., which they can't go into because they're banned in kind of a reverse salty spittoon situation. <laughs> Oh my god. It's like those dudes who are like, yeah, I love going into Hooters, but just for the wings. So Plankton is in the Salty Spittoon, sorry, not the Salty Spittoon, he's in Weenie Hut Juniors, and they're like, you're working with those evil guys, and two dudes in Weenie <laughs> costumes, there's no robot here, it's just, it's all staffed by fish now, and two guys in Weenie costumes show up and beat Plankton with wieners? <laughs> not a fetish i swear yeah yeah nothing nothing abnormal they're a pair of leg breakers any of that they're a pair of leg breakers Jeez. from finger fun industry <laughs> i was you beat me to it god damn it, <laughs> god damn it. The west. oh my god <laughs> they're a fastest fists in the so world anyway after <laughs> Funnest double fist <laughs> double in the fist world. experience. <laughs> anyway, so after after Plankton suffers under the weenie breakers, he he brings <laughs> Come the just food. Say that. Stop saying to them. shit. Yes, Stop. yes, I can. He suffers under the weenie breakers. He brings breakers. the food. <laughs> he brings the oh. food to the to to all of them, and they're like, "Oh, cool, awesome." Anyway, it's time for your next task. So 
The next hazing task that they put Plankton up to is that Plankton has to put a a flaming bag of of something onto the doorstep of a superhero known as the, the, the foot. foot. No! Stop it! Enough! So Plankton runs up to the doorway, he puts the flaming bag on the doorstep, and he's like giggling and chuckling like a little fool. Then the door opens, and a live-action blue-skinned foot Come wearing a cape on. Stop, jumps please. out and stomps on him. <laughs> Stop! Is, uh, is, and he has to wriggle his way out from underneath the foot. Oh toes. my god! Is, is this is this episode gonna end with Plankton just like waking up with cum in his pants? Because that's the energy this whole thing has had. Like, oh, he goes to the weenie breaker, then the big foot gets. So it's the next the one. Like, okay, foot. Plankton, for your final test, you need to put in this ball gag and bend over while we get the riding crop. Oh my god. We're gonna put we're gonna put you in the plankton flattener. We're taking you to the fiery fisto pain. So then uh the the after Plankton gets free of the foot, um the bag that he put down explodes, uh killing the foot along with his house. What is this blowing episode them up in a, a gigantic kill fire town. explosion? I, it's just yeah, so many you characters do a kill count the, for just this one episode of Captain Pitch. The only character that I'm happy that is dead is this fucking foot. I'm so <laughs> glad it's gone. Yeah. I am, thank God. So, I'm literally just picturing so, James so, Janice doing like a dead meat kill count for Captain oh Pitch. Oh my God, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, James, do it. So Plankton said, yeah, I put a little uh, extra, like, you know, experimental chum in that bag. So Plankton, you know, willingly murdered uh, <laughs> the foot. As, and we all as any of us would it. in that, that situation. That one I condone. Yeah, exactly. I condone that. So anyway, uh, the team up is now secured. Enough hazing has been done. And it's time for the climax of the episode. If the viewers slash writers have not done so already. They barge into the Krusty Krab and start terrorizing everything. The dirty bubble captures SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs and Squidward. The customers are being attacked by Man Ray and the Jumbo Shrimp. Notodorus is doing things, stuff. I don't know, man. She's there. <laughs> but like, She's trying her best. Yeah. yeah. Man Ray is using his gun to shoot through the door of Mr. Krabs' office and then into the vault and take the formula. And like, it's going off without a hitch. It's much like when Plankton got his family to to, mm. to do it. It's like he gets the help and and then he's just, you know, on a rampage. <laughs> but of course, well, how do you guys think it will go sour? Zooey, you first. <laughs> I don't want to know. I just, I, I, I want to get out of here, Gus. <laughs> the foot comes back. <laughs> he's twice as big and twice as stinky, and he stamps on the whole <laughs> restaurant. He's wearing a sock world sink stinky <laughs> sock over his stinky foot. Oh my because god! This is so normal. And he brought his twin brother Lefty, the other foot, and together they <laughs> mash all the villains between their toes. They add his and his gangs of little toe-based sidekicks. The average toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god, the I just toe got jams. That. that is not what happens. Uh Henry, any theories? That was my theory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair enough. Um so Man Ray takes a look at the formula and says, "Hey, wait a minute. This isn't a formula for world domination. This is just some recipe for a sandwich." And immediately all of the villains like like, they just kind of are like, Plankton, you got some explaining to do. And Plankton goes, yeah, but if I get it, I'll put this guy out of business. And they're like, but these are good sandwiches. Why would we want that? <laughs> and they all eat the sandwiches. That's actually kind of a brilliant twist. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I actually kind of like like how it, like, it, it makes sense that they wouldn't be into this, you know? Yeah. Like, especially because, like, in the, when... Uh, every villain is lemons was formed. Um, part of their like grievances was whether or not people could get the 
the size of Krabby Patty that suited how they felt on the inside. Yeah, and we know from the kind of weight gain fetish episode that Man Ray is a big fan of Krabby Patty, so <laughs> it's canon. I can't believe it didn't go straight to his thighs. Why did it go straight to his <laughs> And then he'll blow up. <laughs> and then he'll blow up. Uh, <laughs> and act like he don't know nobody. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> This is the episode of Deep Cuts. Anyway, um, Man Ray gives the formula back to Mr. Krabs. He says, "There's, there you go, boss. And um, they then put Plankton in a bottle of um, Weenie Hut Jr. evil sauce. Which Another is bottle! Weenie yeah. Hut Jr. had. <laughs> Maybe this gave Plankton well, yeah, the idea wait, Plankton for ends the genies. Up... <laughs> wait, Plank- so Plankton ends up in a bottle... And then Mr. Krabs says, no outside condiments. And he throws the bottle in the trash, bookending this with the same exact ending for Plankton as the prior episode. <laughs> Fuck this show. What, why is they end up in a ketchup bottle, a stock SpongeBob ending? <laughs> does I don't it happen know. again? How many times does, it- does this happen? They can't keep getting away with it. Also, just while it's fresh in my mind, I googled this because I had to be sure that I didn't dream it. Um, you can you can put this on the screen, Gus, right now. I need to show you a picture <laughs> of Fat Man Ray. Whoa! <laughs> oh, why is he so? Why has he got so much Grease. like goo on it? But but here's the thing. He's got so much. He's uh, such uh, a greasy boy. And this needs to end up in the episode. So, I literally just googled Fat Man Ray Spongebob, and I clicked on this image because it was the most zoomed in, but where this image is actually hosted, is <laughs> this screen cap is on DeviantArt with the title Man Ray's Endless Hunger. <laughs> oh, man. And let's see sure the jelly fine. bean baby. I'm yeah, sure yeah, that is an the adorable baby. That is an adorable child. What a yeah. What a marketable hero. When's his spin-off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that kid. All right. So that was I like this kid. He's iconic. That was Captain uh Pipsqueak. This Pip next squeak. episode. Oh, no, the episode God. where everyone fucking died. There is nothing I could do to justify this next episode. Is it worse than any of the ones that we've already discussed? Like, here's the thing. I don't know if it's worse, but it is the most that I'm genuinely like, how'd you come up with this, guys? You know, it's, it's, it's... (laughs) When, when'd you get so smart? (laughs) Yeah, when'd you get so smart? No, no intelligent. This is much like uh, Johnny and Clyde on Patreon, one dollar a month, no big deal. Um... This is made with top-of-the-line anti-intelligence technology. The title is Mm -hmm. There's a Sponge in My Soup. Oh, no! Come on, now. So, I'm going to keep up the tradition. Zooey first, then Gus. What do you think is the main conflict of this episode? Zooey, what do you think? Uh, It sounds like there's a snake in my boot. From There's a sponge in my soup. There's a sponge in my soup. <laughs> Could this be another fabled fine dining episode? <laughs> <I'm breathing. laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I, uh... do you, Should do you... I? Do I want to know? Do you, Do you have any speculations, Garth? Is somebody going to try to eat SpongeBob? Uh, <laughs> that's it. That's all. <laughs> they they introduce soup as a new food at the Krusty Krab, and SpongeBob I don't know unleashes flakes some of he his absorbs the soup? into it. Yeah, I don't know. So, he absorbs the soup and becomes a soup Bob <laughs> soup soggy Bob. pants. So Zooey, you're actually half right. Um, but which which half? So this is an episode about Mr. Krab. Adding soup to the Krusty Krab menu. Really? But, what? But, <laughs> but but the but the vat of soup being invaded by three hippies. 
one of which what? is <laughs> wait why why <laughs> why so before we get into this episode <laughs> Because Spongebob is all about tangents, <laughs> this actually reminded me, I thought I'd uh, read uh, this out loud because I think both of you would get a kick out of it. It reminded me of this thing that uh, Bogleach posted on Tumblr like a thousand years ago, and it has still uh, aged yes. so well. Things cartoon writers seem to think are very, very funny that I never found funny even as a small child. Are you ready? Yes. E each one will say, give me a yes or no if you think it's funny or not. So, literally top of the list is hippies. Then, yes. appropriately, inflation. Thank you, Man Ray. <clears throat> then, mm -hmm. drill sergeants. Then, anybody meditating and making that ohm sound. Um, imitations of celebrities with no additional joke about why they're there. Lol, only weird, b uh, boring, dumb old sissies get that into art, and especially ugly nonsense modern art, right, kids? And then underneath that, that same joke but with poetry, that same joke but with interpretive dance, that same joke but with musicals. Then, uh, actually, aren't all of those things also gay stereotypes? Is that how they became comedy cliches? Jesus. Then, any Battle of the Sexes episodes... Then the, the nerd uses a science word that honestly most of the audience probably knows, but we're supposed to think they're lame and weird and other characters are like, in English, please. And then <laughs> diapers, bagpipe music. And the last one is a character getting attached to a pet to a degree we're supposed to find excessive. And sometimes it's supposed to be funny that it dies. I don't know if I've ever seen that last one. But uh, the the rest are pretty pervasive on Nickelodeon I feel like, shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that last one more often happens when it's like a pet rock situation. Like they've decided something that isn't alive is their pet. Or I think they but, like, like the trauma yeah. is real when it gets destroyed. I think Peter once also murdered Quagmire's cat with a straight razor on uh, Family Guy as well. So maybe that's what that's referring to. Maybe. Who knows? Okay. Yeah. So. Getting quickly away from that, the episode begins with a Bikini Bottom in winter, and you can tell because it's literally an establishing shot of the Krusty Krab with a blue filter on it and a sign outside <laughs> that says, Winter Menu Soup. Is there any snow or no? Or is no it just, snow. Just a blue filter? <laughs> just a blue okay. filter. Winter they, they needed menu. to use that. They needed to use that blue filter from the foot on something else. They had to justify. <laughs> they paid the a lot of money for that blue filter. Yeah, they're like, we gotta use this. <laughs> we gotta... Oh my god! So we, we then cut to SpongeBob stirring a big vat of soup in the kitchen, and Mr. Krabs <laughs> is like, already, I've got the perfect ingredients for the crabby soup, and he's got this plate, and he's like, a half-eaten crabby patty. Gross up, close up on kind of a rotten half-eaten crabby patty. Throws that in. Two moldy pickles, throws those in, and not mashed, but smashed potatoes that look like Squidward. And there's just going like into a, soup? A, Why? It, it's just a plate with like mashed potatoes that is in the shape of Squidward's head, and he pours it into the vat. And this is a level of unethical food that SpongeBob just can't stand by. And uh, SpongeBob says, Mr. Krabs, did you get these items from the trash? And Mr. Krabs responds, Of course not, that wouldn't be legal. I intercepted these items on the way to the trash. And it cuts to him as people go to throw some of their food in the trash, emerging from the garbage can and, like, grabbing the food, like, leftovers before it goes in. He's oh like... my god, you cheap motherfucker. <laughs> is, is it weird Krabs. that, like... The image of this reminds me of that um, show, Mr. Meaty, where, like, yeah. the puppet character, like, has the, the tapeworm inside him, and it, like, shoots up out of his mouth and, like, <gasps> like grabs the food out of the air. Yeah! I'm sorry, I don't know why. Horrifying. Uniquely Nickelodeon cursedness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you see every yeah. so often. So... Mr. Krabs is like, uh, yeah, no, I want everyone in Bikini Bottom eating my soup. And he starts listing off different types of people. And then at the end, Spongebob goes, hippies? And Mr. Krabs is like, what? 
And SpongeBob goes, yeah, there are some hippies around the hydrothermal vent behind the restaurant. And Mr. Krabs' top lip, like, twitches in that, like, he is just murderously angry about the concept of hippies. He's like Grunkle Stan! (laughs) Oh my god! What what year is this punchline for? I know. Like, yeah. The the hottest joke of 1968 <laughs> making its way to a yeah. probably like Hippies. 2017 episode of SpongeBob. <laughs> he hates oh hippies God. so like, much. He he wants them to die. <laughs> <laughs> It's wild because I remember like like fairly odd parents making a ton of hippie jokes and they were already dated back then. Yeah. Like and that's the supposedly good seasons of fairly odd parents. Sorry, it's not as good as you remember everybody. Fair. I I agree. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. Like there there are some there are some good like jokes and episodes here and there, but it's got that Butch Hartman stank on it. It does. Um, it does. He's just not particularly funny or imaginative. <laughs> Megan and I were talking about, um, I, I do not know what made me think of this, but I randomly went, I want to go to Escalator World yesterday. And then I was like, wait, <laughs> yeah. wait, wait was that a George Bush like joke? And Meg was like, yes, it was. They were all George Bush jokes. And I was thinking, you know that meme? It's appropriately like the sort of confused SpongeBob <laughs> looking at two books. And I think it's oh, like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's Butch Hartman is Spongebob, and it's like my inherent conservatism on one half, and my desire to joke about the lowest hanging fruit possible on the other half. God. No, literally, literally. Because I remember, I remember there was this one joke in like the School's Out special, which was about the backstory of Flappy Bob, their clown character, and... His parents were like, we've been searching for you for years. We even tried U.S. Congress. It was full of clowns, and none of them were fun. God damn. Great, great work on political humor, Butch. Anyway, yeah. so... You know, because kids are just going to be slapping their knees and being like, Haha, it's true, the government is corrupt. <laughs> this is what we derive humor from. I mean, as we, children. I mean, we were but making I... a lot of jokes about copyright law and a recent thing we wrote for kids, so maybe we <laughs> we, we can't write about it. That's true. All. That's true. But... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very. Anyway, <laughs> so um, Mr. Krabs goes outside, and there are this gang of three hippies standing around the hydrothermal vent, and Mr. Krabs is like, "You gotta get out of here!" And they're like, "Ah, oh, but we're we're vent creatures. We like it really hot." So, Mr. Crab goes in to try and attack them, but he trips and lands face first in the vent. You know, it's those, like, volcanic undersea, like, volcano yeah. things. Um, that that yeah, one yeah, that yeah, destroyed yeah. that guy who was searching for Spongebob. <laughs> At least they still have one in, personality. In, uh... <laughs> no, yeah, was... yeah. <laughs> but, so, Mr. Krabs is in there, and while he's in there, the three hippies point to the kitchen in the open door and are like, hey, that looks warm. And they all go and jump in the soup. And then Mr. Krabs oh, pulls himself geez. out of the thing. His incinerated eyes crumble into dust and he blindly staring into the wrong direction goes, yeah, you better run. <laughs> so that's our inciting incident. <laughs> So why is this called There's a Sponge in My Soup when it's clearly there are three hippies in my my soup? Yeah. Is what actually happens. They didn't want to spoil it. They can't spoil (laughs) it in the title. They can't spoil the soup in the title. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Well. It's true. It's true. It's going to get a bit stranger from here. So SpongeBob tries to. Also, wait a second. Uh, Wait a second. Wait a second. The. I'm not letting this one skate by. <laughs> the pun is there's a fly in my soup. That's what they're trying to pun on. But there's also, like, a pretty famous, like, story about, like, stone soup. This could have just been called sponge soup. And you would have cut out the middleman. Then I think sp- sponge soup sounds more like something we would have encountered on that old iceberg video. Like, there's something ominous yeah, sponge, about sponge, sponge soup. soup. Sponge soup. It's what they serve at the sexquarium. <laughs> no. Okay. 
So SpongeBob starts trying to like chop different vegetables and stuff into the soup, but as soon as it goes in, the hippies just eat it. Like, the, their faces just, like, crest out of the soup and oh devour God, whatever he puts no. in. <laughs> no. I can't. Mr. Krabs, just heat up the vat a little bit more. Oh, wait, no, they were in a hydro... Oh, they were in a vent! They're too powerful! <laughs> they cannot kill them. Heat will not remove them! No. Heat no. will not remove them from the soup! No, no, it, it's, it's true. They're it's uncookable. True. So... Uh, like, Mr. Krabs is like, oh, what's happening here? All the, all the condiments disappearing. And Spongebob rolls up his, like, yellow arm skin, revealing a hairy oh. pink arm underneath, and, like, reaches into the suit oh, no. to test it. It's okay, it's his, it's his anchor arms, he kept them. Yeah, and they're just like, oh, it must be the hungry type of soup. Oh, Oh God! That this is the it. worst oh, one. Boy. I think this is the worst one of the ones that we have thus far talked about. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's the most like, like conceptually nothing. Like it's yeah. what if Mr. Krabs got hippies like... in his soup? <laughs> what if Mr. Krabs got hippies in his soup? Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's one of those things where it's like like the plankton genie plot line was like really dumb and not thought out. But at the very least, like the audience does understand the mechanics of a genie and knows like why like why he would think that it might work theoretically there is no reason that this is an episode about both soup and hippies <laughs> and hippies being uh inextricable from the soup it's like they pulled up like those Google like random thing generators and just kept fucking clicking it <laughs> until yeah, it they has were like, such, like yeah. Mad yeah. energy. Yeah. But it's not fun. <laughs> there were hippies in the soup. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> How bullshit must the other <laughs> pitches have been this day that this one was accepted? Maybe they were just tired. <laughs> yeah. Like they gotta do something. I, the other one, the other ones were like, I don't know, fucking a a cat in a fucking brownie or something. And they're like, we gotta come up with something better than uh, this. What if SpongeBob shits himself and Patrick eats it? <laughs> uh, SpongeBob SpongeBob meets an astronaut who is feeding them stinky cat food. SpongeBob blows up Malaysia. And then just the Sponge last Bob. guy is like, oh, there's hippies <laughs> yeah. in the soup. And they're like, that is the least objectionable idea I've heard all day. Let's do it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> it, you know, you know, we might be being too harsh on this one, guys. Maybe, like, the hippie soup episode is going to be up there with, like, body swap episodes. Or, like, and, a Willy like, Wonka parody beach episode. episode. Yeah, yeah. It, they're they're truly uh, like breaking new ground here, you know. Maybe some some other shows have to iterate on the formula of the hippie soup episode. People watching it. this, those of you who are creative, tell us in the comments how would your OC react to hippies in soup? <laughs> Gus, the way that you're yeah. like hyping this up sounds like you have a gun to your head. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. I, I, listen. I, 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 I just think hippie soup is the future, and uh, I'm not it. saying this because Hieronymus uh, hippie soup has a gun to my head. <laughs> Gus starts like knocking out "help me" in Morse code on the table. <laughs> <laughs> every every letter of like the first word in the sentence that Gus says spells out "help me." I'm just I'm just thinking yeah, about yeah. fucking Floop is a madman. Help us, save us <laughs> from Spike. Hey, everyone, <laughs> let piss so, something <laughs> something. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha ha! Everyone loves plankton. <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> uh -huh, everyone loves plankton. Yeah, yeah, we get uh, it, Gus. We, we love plankton. Uh -huh, everyone we get it. We get it. We love. Oh. <laughs> so I'm gonna. Uh -huh, add, I'm, I'm... Everyone loves plankton. Majorly enough. <laughs> I'm gonna add another addendum to the comment thing. If you don't have an OC comment haha everyone loves plankton so we know you got this far please yeah. please exactly oh my God. 
<laughs> this is our little, this is the little section of, of, of uh, you know, comments. Uh, two different comment prompts at once. <laughs> We're giving you the double fist action experience yeah. on Splash Mountain. The two-fisted fun ride in the glove comments. world. Awful. Yes, okay, exactly. So, uh, at this point, we the gloves are coming off. <laughs> we, we, we get into the fun and games section of the classic hippie soup plot. Um, you know, the, yeah. the the soup is the soup is ladled out and given to different customers. <laughs> With the hippies still in it, the, they're yeah. tasting still hippie. Inside. But like one of them is Bubble Bass, who also has a burger, and I think the hippie comes out and eats his burger. And they are like tapeworms. <laughs> How much soup did they? How much soup do they need to submerge in it? Are they in like a are they in like a bowl? Are yeah, they in an extra a dimensional space bowl. now? And and the weirdest one of How all How big is are these hippies? That they they normal sized. That one of the fish <laughs> is I believe the like tall, dark and handsome anchovy from the prom episode in season 1. And wow. He, and he's there with his wife. And the one girl hippie comes out of the soup and kisses him. And his wife slaps him and is like, Gerald, clearly you love your soup more than me. And uh, what just, on earth is going on? <laughs> who? Who? Why? Well, I mean, these are just the kind of genius jokes you can have when you go with the hippie in a soup plot. TM, TM, TM. <laughs> Haha, ha, yes! I, I, love ha, the, ha, ha. I, I love that the moral everyone of this plankton. episode... <laughs> everyone loves Plankton! Ha, ha, everyone loves Plankton! Ha, ha. <laughs> what is the moral of this episode, guys? Please enlighten uh, us, because I watched it and I don't think I saw it. Well, the moral of the episode is obviously that, like, you shouldn't make bad soup or it will become infested by hippies. It's true, and, and the thing is I that the public knows this, because... They go to the desk and complain, and are like, this is bad soup. And they're like, why? And they're like, there's hippies in it. At which point, Mr. I mean, also, all the ingredients were basically, like, half-eaten and from the trash anyway. So, like, the soup was a lost cause, but the hippies aren't helping it. <laughs> no, it, it's true. Hippies? It's true. So, all of the, the hippies then, somehow, I've forgotten how. This, this episode is one of those, like, it feels like fucking Valium. You just like drifting in and out. <laughs> um, they they all get back into the kind of master vat, and uh, Mr. Krabs tries various attempts to uh, get them back in. Oh yeah, no, I forgot one of the weirdest bits before Bubble Bass. Uh, the the one of the hippies pops out of the soup, fucks a guy over in some kind of way, and then goes make soup, not war, and slides back into the bowl. Oh, the, these it's so funny. In, like, it's so funny. Hippies are so funny. So silly. Oh my god! Isn't Everyone so... has a frame of reference for who these guys are, isn't it? And what they stand for. Uh... Isn't it so fucked up in hindsight that everyone makes fun of the like make love not war thing, but contextually that was about the fucking Vietnam War. One of the most like widely considered like a horrible, pointless wars in American history. Yeah. So it's like the hippies were completely right on that one. Maybe That's you fun. should be nice to them and let them in your soup. <laughs> let the hippies in your goddamn soup. Okay, so <laughs> at this point, we uh we 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 try to get this sorted out. SpongeBob goes up to Mr. Krabs and is like, "Yeah, there are hippies in the soup." And Mr. Krabs, uh, I wrote this down, says the baffling line, Son, did you forget to pay your brain bill again? Which, I... Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs. That is a zinger. That is a certified zinger. But you should know that the hippies are in the soup by now. <laughs> <laughs> and they are. And... They Mr. Sure Krabs are. is like, okay, we, we've got some plans. His first plan is, he's like, okay, he's got a fishing rod. He's like, which, by the way, weird object to exist in the SpongeBob world. I was about to say. like That it, is truly strange, especially because the hooks were like an eldritch, unknowable threat. 
is when it, they were when they showed up. Is it kind of is, the equivalent of like, be like, oh, we've got some like squatters behind the restaurant. We need to get them out of here. And the boss is like, oh, don't worry. I know just the thing. And he like takes a hand grenade out of his desk. It's like that level of like, oh my well, god, yeah, dude. Like, don't, no, no, yeah, no. It's even, it's even more so than that. It's the, um, it's like he just pulls out the miniature like atomic bomb from Future Cops. <laughs> yeah, fair. I was gonna. By say the this... way, uh, Future Cops is a movie that we talk about on the Patreon. Uh, it is just a dollar a month, and you get cool podcasts. Uh, from everybody involved in the channel. We're going to do one with you, Zoe. We're going to pick a weird movie and make you watch it. Oh, no. God, please exactly. help me. <laughs> uh, everyone, uh, everyone, loves everyone, everyone, loves uh, everyone loves Plankton. Everyone loves Plankton. Everyone loves Plankton. Everyone loves Plankton. So, so Mr. Krabs has this fishing rod, and he's like, okay, my first attempt. There's nothing hippies love more than long hair. And he just has, like, a clump of long human hair. Oh, photorealistic on. on the end oh. of this uh, fishing rod, and he lowers it that. into the soup. <laughs> soup that he is intending to sell, Ew. because Spongebob <sighs> earlier was like, hey, <sighs> why don't you just pour out the soup? And Mr. Krabs is like, I'm not gonna lose my investment in this soup. Is this like the gross-out humor? It Yeah, it's so gross. Like the, the lame gross-out humor that's just not it funny, is. it's just stupid. There's been a lot of lame gross-out humor in like more recent episodes of Spongebob. Like, it's a crutch that they rely on a lot more than they used yeah. to. Damn. Yeah. So, that doesn't work, because of course it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> And great, now there's just hair in the suit. And, and Mr. Cool. Krabs' next and plan is even more bizarre. He he takes out, like, a colourful hacky sack ball and starts playing hacky sack with Spongebob and is like, there's no way they'll be able to resist coming out and playing hacky sack with us. Oh, just play the hits. We, we love these stereotypes that a- anybody has thought about in the last ten years. <laughs> Maybe I'm out of the loop, but I wouldn't have mentally associate, uh, associated associated hippies with hacky sack. Is that a hippie thing? No, no. I I, I think it's just one of those things where like like hippies, especially in like these cartoons, it's just kind of a catch all term for like eh, like <laughs> a lot of different things. But like. Like, they're also just, like, stoners on a college campus yeah, or something? Mi- Mr. Or Krabs regular... keeps calling them deadbeats. Why Why is hacky sack? Okay, like... yeah, so that's completely different. What was that, Zoe? Are, so this is... Are yeah. they allowed to use hacky sack? It is a registered trademark on the Whammo website. <laughs> I love the Whammo <laughs> website. <laughs> not website. not sponsored, but it is funny because there's only two two items on here, and it's the hacky sack assortment and the hacky sack impact. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you will not you will not be able to withstand the hacky sack the hacky impact. Sack. Oh, I have an idea. Oh, I would love to pick. Oh, sorry, I'm getting off track. <laughs> 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 yeah. Just thinking about, like, I was gonna. Uh, I was gonna say, yeah, no, it's it's true. <laughs> like this is uh, Mr. Krabs is kind of like dead to rights in the legal sites of of the law because you know the hacky sack is a trademark of Mr. Hieronymus Sack. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gendo Ikari is doing everything he can to stop the hacky sack impact from uh, destroying the world. The hacky sack impact. Don't bring him back, the I know, sack. I know I hacked your sack. <laughs> no, n- enough of that. I'm fool to myself. You can't say that. There's hippies in my soup. <laughs> God damn it. All right, so the hacky sack fails because the oh ball goes up and a hippie jumps out of the soup, hacky sacks it into the soup with him. Then it cuts down to him and the other hippies in the soup dimension they continue playing the hacky sack, and they're like, man, well done. You, like, freed that ball from gravity for, like, forever. Enough! <laughs> I was just about to say, I have I That's have how I feel about this. No, and, and it keeps going. Like, these going. hippie jokes. Because comedy comes in so three. So lame. Because comedy comes in three, we've oh, got... Oh, yay! <laughs> it, you know what? You know what this is? 
this feels like there was gonna be the like the Krusty Krab has the soup and they ran out of soup jokes immediately <laughs> and then they're like ah oh, hippies <laughs> hippies then because why not and then there were hippies that why are you soup? putting hippies in the soup episode fuck you that, that lets us operate on complete autopilot of uh the like just run-of-the-mill hippie jokes yeah some of which aren't even like hippie jokes they're just kind of like i guess like <laughs> any young people <laughs> joke yeah like, they couldn't that, have, like like but like from any era what was that Zoe? like they couldn't have tried to like relate things at least like if you're gonna do hippies can you at least have it be like i don't know like woodstock like yeah. the fish equivalent of woodstock like, yeah that's instead of have making like literal stock like, like did they see woodstock and go oh stock oh we can make stock from 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 chicken bones that's like soup let's do hippies <laughs> and soup yeah that's so like, the the soup like, oh my god like, Zooey, Zooey's out here creating better hippie soup media, which is what the world needs in these trying times. My God, like, where did you get soup? Like, yeah, that's the thing. It's either where did you get hippies or where did you get soup? <laughs> I, yeah, this is not a combination. That is Henry, Henry, sensical. you were. <laughs> Henry, you were so right when you said that this episode is like indefensible. <laughs> like, like, like this is not, this is not like, <laughs> this is not correct. This, this does is not, not right. Pass the, is There's this anything about... test? It isn't anything. It, it really isn't. doesn't. It's not anything. It's two nothings together as one nothing. <laughs> like. <laughs> Oh. Zero plus zero equals All right, zero. So, so what they, do they, they were hoping they that next? zero plus they, zero they... equaled one. Um, so yeah. So Mr. What do they, Krabs... what do they do next? Do they pull out a ditchery dude? Do they make peace signs? Do they like you know? You were close, like, Gus. Hold up some protest signs. Oh god! No, oh no! You, you, you were close, <laughs> Mr. Krabs. Squidward and SpongeBob start a drumming circle on some bongos. <laughs> You gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> and and Mr. Krabs is like, it's part of the hippie code. They have to join in when there's a drumming circle. And they do start... They? God fucking damn it. I'm once again gonna do my classic thing, <laughs> Zooey first, then Gus. Where do you think this joke is gonna go? Because you're both gonna be wrong. Zooey, you first. They... <sighs> They start like a fucking soup circle and like dance around the soup or something. And <laughs> I don't fucking know. It's I'd rather this be. That sounds like cultish, but I would rather this be a cult episode at this point. It's true, Gus. What do you, <laughs> what, what do you think is going to be the outcome of the drum circle? Those drums are a hundred percent going into the soup dimension. Like everything else. <laughs> Wait, and the they will have the drums and Mr. Krabs will have to try some other stupid thing to get them out. Do, do they do they do they put soup in the drums? No, they, they they are just bongos. Weirdly, would you have guessed that Mr. Krabs there is no explanation for this, but Mr. Krabs bought unusually hard bongo drums. So <laughs> As oh, as man. they bongo more and more intensely, first SpongeBob <laughs> and then Squidward tap out because it's hurting their hands and their hands like pulse. And in the soup, <laughs> the hippies are kind of jiving to it and they start to come out and Mr. Krabs <laughs> keeps bongoing as they come out like a snake charmer, but he's bongoing so hard, his <laughs> claws are starting to shatter as he hits them against the drums. <laughs> oh no! And eventually, his hands just both completely shatter until he has stumps, at which point the hippies just retreat back into the soup. <laughs> See, in my head... He done bongoed his hands off! In my head, this episode is horrible, but in my head, I'm picturing, like, the most awesome, fucking, like, gory, scary movie shit ever, <laughs> but I know it's Spongebob, yeah, yeah. and it's for, like, kids, so it's gonna look stupid, and it's not even worth it! Yeah, it's true, like, you're right. He's, 
It's just, like, it's just, yeah, Mr. Krabs is just like, I must get these hippies out at the cost of my very hands. <laughs> I'll put everything into the bongos. And when this fails, he puts <laughs> scuba gear Yes, on. maestro, lead us to ecstasy. <laughs> when this fails, he puts Spongebob in scuba gear and makes him jump into the soup. Sponge in the soup! Yeah, there we go. <laughs> It happened! It finally happened! Like, it just took eight, so many hippie jokes. Like eight of eleven minutes in, and <laughs> he's finally there's a finally in my soup. So, something one. You thing gotta makes be sense. kidding! You gotta be kidding me! What? So is the plan that SpongeBob gets these guys out of the soup, or is it that Krabs is just like, listen, just kill the hippies, <laughs> just kill them, and leave them in the soup? They're, they're flavoring now. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck peace. They're flavoring the soup now. <laughs> the people are going to eat the soup and they're going to get real high. Awful. So, no, Mr. Krabs... That's just, that's just the fucking... The, the, the word choice is fascinating <laughs> because Mr. Krabs says he wants Spongebob to get in there and evict the hippies. Like a... All right. <laughs> okay. And Spongebob goes down there, but... Spongebob goes down, and he gets inducted into the hippie lifestyle, and his his clothes become hippie clothes, and they're all meditating, and he's spinning around, and he goes, down is up, and up is down. It's all relative, man. And then there's a weird slow-mo close-up on his mouth as he repeats, relative. And then the other fish, the, the hippie fish go like, man, you just blew our minds. And then. Oh, no. Okay. SpongeBob's become a hippie. <laughs> a soup hippie. It's true. So, so anyway, um, then Patrick, also in hippie clothes, appears. He hasn't been in this episode prior to this. And um, huh. he, 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 SpongeBob was like, Patrick, what are you doing down here? And he's just like, riding down the inner tube of life, man. And this bit I actually got a clip of that we'll probably play right about now. This is a hate crime against Zooey. But um, mm. SpongeBob is like, I need to help Mr. Krabs. And Patrick goes, no crabs, and he pulls out like a protest sign of just a photo of a crab with the like red circle with a line through it over it. <laughs> yeah, you, you know the clip I'm talking about, yeah, do you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Patrick's yeah. tongue oh my God. comes out and wraps around the sign. He eats the sign and then just spits out the like red no sign at SpongeBob's face. And it's like, yeah, no, I just can't vibe with crabs. <laughs> and that's really okay. Sure. So SpongeBob, realizing he can't get the hippies out, climbs out of the soup into an empty and derelict crusty crab. Okay. What is what? Uh, what, what right. What's happening? A what is happening? I'm a little intrigued. How did he? Did he like? Did he get Rip Van Winkled because he spent too long in the soup dimension? Well, he, did he, he get Urashima? He comes out, and Mister Krabs has like a gray beard and long hair, and he's a hippie now, and. Like, Spongebob is like, what sure. happened? And Mr. Krabs is like, ah, oh, well, you know, with like I couldn't sell the soup. I had to shut down the restaurant. And you were my best fry cook. You were in there. So uh, the, the Krusty Krab is gone now. And Spongebob is like, what? And Mr. Krabs literally says, like, oh, you shouldn't feel bad about it, man. You know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the free love now. I used to be a tool of capitalism. But all of that has changed. <laughs> Actual quote. He actually says that. What? <laughs> oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Mr. Krabs <gasps> refers to himself no way. as a tool of capitalism in this episode. Oh my god. Okay, suddenly, 
suddenly this makes it all worth it. I feel it like does. that one bit. It really is like, does. It, like it somehow adds anything to the, to this soup of nonsense and hippies. Zero plus zero does equal one. They have, and this yeah, is the they, one. They have broken the laws of math to make this happen. So, yeah. Oh my god. So, they made a negative ten out of ten. So like Spongebob starts like crying and like the hippies like come out of the soup at which point Mr. Krabs reveals it was all a ruse to get the hippies out. And we cut to later. The Krusty Krab is running as normal again. And Spongebob's like, oh, what did you do with the hippies, by the way? And Mr. Krabs is like, oh, well, I gave them, like, a, a, a different place to be. And you suddenly get hippies in this other, like, weird dimension. But the background is, like, gr uh, uh, blue rather than green and they're like oh you know it's real nice of like mr krabs to like set us up with the with these new digs and it zooms out to reveal that they are in squidward's bathtub while squidward what is taking a bath and squidward is, i don't like that at all Squidward is laying there with his like bath mask on and the hippies surface and they were like hey what a bath time carrot man and they put a carrot in his mouth. Oh no, it was a bath time potato. And he eats it. It was like, yeah, thanks, brother. Then there's a beat. And he takes his mask off and screams hippies. And the episode ends. What does the ending have what? anything to do with anything at all? And also, like, Squidward is a clarinet playing aspiring artist. In what universe would he have a problem with hippies? Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, 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 they're his people, yeah, you he know? practically is a hippie. Like, like, yeah. Exactly, like, in the loosely connected framework of cartoon hippies, a lot of the same stereotypes that are applied to these people are applied to Squidward. Like, you know, the kind of bohemian lifestyle, the young people, the stoners, the, like, progressive, liberal stuff. Like, it's all, like, Squidward is coded that way, too. So, like, Squidward's even into, like, interpretive dawn. Yeah, you're right. And also, how hot is his bathwater if it's comparable to a volcanic vent or a hot <laughs> soup? Like, hit, like, I don't want to overthink this, but, like, this, <laughs> this, is, this is really weird. And I'm not going to, like, name any names, but it's something that I've experienced. There are a lot of people working in children's cartoons, both as, like, writers and showrunners, and as, like, kind of legacy voice actors, who are weirdly, like, super right-wing, despite... Yeah. It's like they never got over their, like, the, the sort of, like, boomer era of being, like, against the, you know, the college campuses and the young people and all their new weird things. Yeah, yeah and, and yeah. it's weird because, like, a lot of these cartoons, and much like that Bogleach list I read out at the start, they reveal this kind of oddly conservative bent. Like, there is a lot of jokes in cartoons, uh, especially the ones that sort of came out in, like, our collective childhood of, like, late 90s, early to mid to late 2000s, um, that was sort of mocking anything that's, like, people being too into art, someone being too, like, gender non-conforming. Like, all these different things were, like, kind of made the, like, butt of jokes in these cartoons. And yeah. even if, like, I doubt the people who wrote this episode, like, sincerely, like, hate hippies, but it goes to show how these tropes, when they're kind of regurgitated without thought, kind of, like, weirdly perpetuate quite regressive ideologies. Especially with the uh, make yeah. make peace not war thing. Mm. Yeah, it's like, like it's that, showing when, that when these had, characters are all yeah. like implicitly pro war, which again is super weird because Steven Hillenburg, who created the show, like big like tree hugger environmentalist dude. It's odd. Not that, but like the the actual yeah, like the way they're treating this topic is odd. Yeah, so and I think weird. it's particularly strange that a lot of this stuff lingers in cartoons because I would say that, like, the biggest market for animation these days, like, in, like, America and the UK and that, are, like, queer teens and 20-somethings. No, literally. Like, for that's, sure. like, the most successful, biggest performing cartoons are aimed at that demographic. Yeah. Yeah. 
But yeah, no, just, again, probably overthinking there's a sponge in my soup. But was just something that kind of occurred yeah, to me well, while we were going through it. <laughs> no, it is, it is something weird. Well, somebody should have had some sort of thought towards this thing at some point. Um, SpongeBob, I think, just doesn't know what its audience is, you know, <laughs> at this point in time. Well, I mean, it, it's strange because I'm genuinely, like, <laughs> this is such a weird tangent. But, you know, Spongebob Boys is about weird tangents, and I guess this one is more intellectual <laughs> rather than, yeah. like, scatological. But I think, like, kids TV um, is having a bit of an identity crisis at the moment. Because sure. fundamentally, mm, yeah. like, YouTube has so many kids now. Yeah, it, It's like... Yeah, yeah there's so much kids content kids on YouTube. Oh, and it's available like, for free. Yeah, and like how many kids really? And you can watch it anytime you want. Yeah, are like tuning in to like syndicated like cartoons because yeah, like obviously there's YouTube and like streaming took a huge chunk. But let's be real, like I don't know if a single child watched say Centaur World. I think that was probably all people like our ages, despite yeah. it being like a kid friendly yeah, show. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. Yep. Yeah, it is that kind of thing of the question of, like, I don't know if I can entirely blame a lot of cartoon writers right now being, like, well, who is our audience? We, like, really, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in the case of Spongebob, it seems to be, like, Widows you know, like us. do things that might get people who used to watch it. Yeah, 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 back into it. Um, And then every so often they'll be like, uh, but, you know... We'll need a hippie soup episode to like fill time because nobody's really watching these episodes. We're just here to sell ads, guys. Are you guys ready for the final episode in this SpongeBob Boys Ooh. installment? Am I don't I think ever. I am ready, but let's do it. I'm not. <laughs> it's the SpongeBob Boys. We're not ready. We're not ready. It is called Plane to See, and that's plane as in airplane. To oh, see as no. in S E A. Oh boy, airline oh. humor. Yeah, yep. That was. I was just gonna add an amendment to Bog Leach's thing. Is that one of those things that cartoon writers thinks is really funny? Is oh, we're on an airline and people are doing annoying things, or we're doing things that annoy people. Is it not no. the um, like peak, like literally the like stock example for a hack joke? The whole like, what's the deal with airline food? Does that come up, It's Gus? the one joke they don't do mm. in this. Oh, wow! Okay. Oh! Wow, Surprise. that I'm actually impressed with their restraint. Yeah. Good job, lads. So this episode begins with Squidward walking outside of his house to check his mailbox. He opens it up, and out of his mailbox flops Spongebob and Patrick's backsides. They're just... <sighs> Sticking More out of his mailbox, asses, and we always. see we see a little bit of Patrick crack, crack Rick, great, good, <laughs> crack Rick, yeah, Pat back crack. They they're just recovering in the aftermath of Finger Fun Industries. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! So oh so so Squidward is like, yeah, no thanks, I'm not having this. But then the boys pop out of his mailbox, and they uh, show him a card. Uh, for a trip to Bora Bora Bottom, because there was a sweepstakes that they entered for him over and over again until he won. Squidward's like, oh, excellent. You know, I could really use a vacation. And he reads the card closer, and it's like, wait a second, a vacation for me and my family? And SpongeBob and Patrick have a devious look on their face. I love how he just can't stop them. They can just insinuate themselves onto, we're coming on this trip with you. Yeah, sure enough. So we cut to Squidward at the airport being like, I can't believe you guys talked me into this. And SpongeBob and Patrick are dressed as little boys. <laughs> they're like licking a lollipop. They have like a propeller hat. Aww. And they're like, we love you, daddy. Oh You're our dad now. Oh my god. So Squidward and his yeah. two idiot sons are at the airport getting ready to leave for their big trip. Uh they get a picture together. The um one of the flight attendants takes a picture of them and uh Patrick won't stop crying because when the boys pretend to be young babies, they really get into it. 
to quote one mm-hmm. Ned Big B, this is bad. <laughs> this is bad. So this next part, I'm just going to say directly from my notes. Uh, uh, we've been over it, but it bears repeating. Airline humor is almost never funny, and it goes on forever. <laughs> just like being on a plane. Do they look like this? I want to say, do they look... Oh, do they look like that, guy? <laughs> yes, they look like these idiots. <laughs> Okay, so we've got jokes about you gotta stay in your assigned seat, even though Squidward's in the most annoying assigned seat in between two man-children morons <laughs> in SpongeBob and Patrick, who keep slamming their butts into him. Enough ha. butts. That is a thing that happens. Ha, ha, ha. Stop it with the butts. No, no butts about it. No. So, like, Squidward is like, I want to get the aisle. And the the uh one of the two flight attendants, the one who is like a sort of more gravelly voiced one, goes like, "No, you stay in your assigned seat." And she cracks her knuckles. And so Squidward does do that. He gets back to his assigned seat. The plane takes off, you know, going up underwater. I don't know why it's not a boat. It's weird that it's a plane, but they're going on a trip now. It it's giving me flashbacks to um the rise of Gru and that whole extended minions on the plane scene. It feels Why very similar, is. and I hate that one of my most beloved shows as a child is comparable to a thing that I simply don't get or like. I feel so lucky that I didn't see Rise of Gru. I have not also seen Rise of Gru. I almost it's, said The Bride of Gru. It's, it's <laughs> The Bride of Gru! The yes, r- I want that movie! The Bride of Gru! The Bride of Gru! We, bride of yeah. we belong dead. The Bride of Gru! <laughs> like... He finally met a Goral for him. I love the idea of just, like, recontextualizing Gru as some kind of horror movie monster. Like, <laughs> like a demake of the original where it's like, yeah, he just is a bad guy. And he's, he's like, scary and he's supernatural like Frankenstein, and weird. Frankenstein-coded. He's got the big shoulders. Yeah. He does. You know what else is Frankenstein-coded? What? This episode, in, in that it's a Frankenstein of a bunch of different airline jokes that are all bad. <laughs> no! Squidward gets tangled up in the seatbelts, and he's really upset, and he's, like, trapped in place. And at one point, Patrick is like, I gotta use the bathroom, because I dreamed I, I had a dream I was under the ocean, and now I gotta pee. And he gets out of his seat and runs over, and he sees there are two doors in front of him. There's the bathroom door, and there is the emergency exit door that you open to jump out of and parachute out of the plane. The flight attendant walks over. She's like, is there a problem? And Patrick says, I, I just need to use the bathroom. And he opens the flight, the, he opens the door, and the flight attendant flies out of the plane. <laughs> oh my god! She's fucking dead. We see her hat create like a little parachute, which to me smacks of a last minute edit. Yeah, that was yeah, like, God, we yeah. uh, we've had too many employed deaths in these episodes. Yeah, but so she goes, and Patrick, thinking that that's the bathroom, is like, oh, rude, and closes the door. Uh, and then the second flight attendant comes over, and like is like, hey, what happened to the first flight attendant? And Patrick says, oh, she's just in the bathroom. And he opens the door. And the second flight attendant also flies out of the plane. Uh, we do not get to see her parachute. So uh, make of that what you will. Patrick she's has an extremely dead. high kill count. <laughs> this is, this like, is a continuation it's... of what you were saying, Zoe. It's more violent Patrick. It's concerning. So in this case, Patrick, having just removed both flight attendants from the plane, picks up a flight attendant hat and does the worst thing he could possibly do in this situation and become the flight attendant. Oh, no. Will he fly out? <laughs> like, no. Because <laughs> Squidward, Squidward presses the button to call for the flight attendant because he's like, ah, I gotta get untangled from this seatbelt. I need help. And he calls the flight attendant, who is now Patrick. Patrick shows up. <laughs> to Squidward's horror, and says, well, now that I'm here, would you like some coffee, sir? And he grabs Squidward's nose and opens his mouth and begins to pour hot coffee into Squidward's face. Imagine how terrified you would be 
if you were go like if if us three were like going on a plane together, and one of us was like, oh, I just got to go to the bathroom, and then came back dressed as a flight attendant. <laughs> Don't ask questions. Yeah. Don't it's ask like, what questions. Happened? It's like, what happened? What happened? Okay, so don't panic. Um, two women are dead. And I have their jobs now. <laughs> Would you like some coffee in this trying time? The way that you said um, Patrick comes back and is the flight attendant now, the way you said that, the delivery was so visceral. <laughs> like, I could feel it. Mm. <laughs> like, Look at me, look at me. I'm the flight attendant now. It's about to get more visceral because uh, as Patrick is pouring hot coffee into Squidward's mouth and going, oh, wow, Squidward, you really like coffee. As Squidward can do nothing to prevent this. Um, SpongeBob jumps out of the, the, uh, like, overhead baggage, (laughs) like, cubby. And goes, wow, Patrick, you're a flight attendant. Can I be one too? And Patrick makes a second hat for SpongeBob. And they're now the flight attendants. While he's doing this, he drops the entire hot coffee and the pitcher into Squidward's head. So now Squidward's head has reformed around the coffee pitcher. He he has a coffee pitcher shaped head. It's barely holding itself in. And coffee is pouring out of his eyes and face oh and nose. Oh my god! It's, it's truly a sight to behold. Squidward is having a bad time. And it gets worse because now Spongebob and Patrick are, you know, throwing snacks at everybody in the aisles. They're like running around and they're just being complete fools. So, so Squidward is like, well, wait a minute. I don't have to take this. I'm going to go complain to the pilots. Squidward makes his way to the front. I of the wonder plane. who the pilots will be. Oh, I'm I'm so I have no idea. It couldn't possibly be SpongeBob and Patrick having killed the pilots wearing their uniforms and flying the plane, could it? Henry, you're right about the uh the ultimate outcome, but the steps are presented to us in order. Because they have not yet occurred. Okay. So Squidward opens the door, and the pilots, the both the pilot and the co-pilot are like, oh, hello. And they, of course, they make the joke of the pilot speaking like, uh, yes, hi, we're gonna, uh, and we've got a little turbulence, uh, get it? Because cause, cause pilots are very attentive and careful, and they speak slowly and deliberately, because it's a difficult job. Um. <laughs> But they have funny voice, so haha. So don't get Good me joke. wrong, I was on a plane literally like earlier in the week. They do all sound like that, but it is played at this point. They do. Yes. So so the pilots are like, what happened to the flight attendants? And Patrick says, Oh, they're just in the bathroom. And he opens the door and he goes, Hurry up in there. And and the pilots from all the way in the in the in the in the cockpit of the plane are sucked out of the plane what? and they go falling through the sky and both of them pull chutes to try and get parachutes and they pants inflate into big like balloon pants that they turn upside down and they now have just giant fat round balloon pants and they float away with their balloon pants i hate that like so i i don't get it either so i suppose i don't know Patrick but... guilty of like hijacking a plane technically uh, yeah I, i've yeah <laughs> yes because squidward goes no one's driving the plane what are we gonna do and he starts freaking out and um uh, in, in the one thing that actually made me laugh out loud in this episode is um, Spongebob and Patrick show up next to him and Patrick with almost a smug look on his face goes, oh yeah, we're gonna crash. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I can die. <laughs> the guilt of killing so many people. So, like, <laughs> this plane, the, burden, the captain the goes down with his ship. So much life. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking... Patrick and Spongebob literally just doing, uh, like, Homelander and Maeve from the first season of The Boys. Patrick being like, get back, <laughs> you animals! And, like, flying out with Spongebob get as back, the plane goes down and crashes. What 
is literally, this episode? Literally. So, so they seem they seem like pretty um fine with the whole thing. But Squidward gets into the pilot chair and he starts hitting buttons, and they're like, Squidward, you gotta just believe in yourself, trust your instincts. You, you can land the plane. You you can't and do that. They see. <laughs> They see Bora Bora Bottom coming. Squidward is panicking. He's hitting every button. He's freaking out. And they're like, you're doing it. Go, Squidward. Go. Go, Squidward. Go. And they're cheering Squidward on. And Squidward is like having like three panic attacks at once. And he's just (laughs) pressing every single button. Somehow or other, they make it down. They make it down to Bora Bora Bottom. And the plane drifts all the way into just shy of the building and we see like a pan out shot of a bunch of background characters from like background fish from bikini bottom just enjoying a tropical paradise squidward immediately is like ah we're finally here and he's happy so you know something's going to go wrong he puts on a hawaiian shirt puts some like like sunscreen or zinc or something on his nose and patrick stabs him 50 times <laughs> <laughs> like it's almost as cruel what happens <laughs> <laughs> the little girl who's absolutely a murderer from yeah, uh, comes out. beneath glove world comes out and like strangles him with a bike chain <laughs> so 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 not only did squidward like like he was panicking because he was trying to land the plane all three of them realize, oh, the autopilot was on. You actually didn't do anything that whole time. And so the plane, still on autopilot, begins to reverse and go back from where it came. So Squidward's (laughs) like, oh, I gotta get out there. I gotta go to the resort. And he runs towards the door. And keep in mind, SpongeBob was in the cabin. Um... In the cockpit, rather. SpongeBob at the he cabin. opens the door. SpongeBob, <laughs> SpongeBob is already outside the cabin. He is already he is already standing on the other side of the door, and he says, "But why would you want to go to the resort, Squidward? You want a trip to see Bora Bora Bottom, not stay there." Oh, oh, that's like, fuck you. And we get a shot of Bora Bora Bottom fading away as the plane begins to take off with the autopilot heading backwards. And, <laughs> like, and, and and you just see, you just hear, like, Spongebob go, like, and there it goes. <laughs> and Squidward is like, no, 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 this can't be. And he's, like, freaking out. And he's, like, running around, like, he's, like, locked in the plane. And Spongebob and Patrick are, like, in the cockpit, and they're like, um... All right, passengers, we're going to be heading back to Bikini Bottom right now. Flight time uh, duration is the next 24 hours. And the speaker is both of their laughing mouths as they go like, ha, 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 and they laugh. And Squidward, like, he's, he, he, like, he, like, runs to the window of the plane and he's like, no, and he's screaming as the plane flies back into the sky, like, away from the vacation. This reminds me of like this feels like the spiritual successor to have have you guys watched the there's like a YouTube animated short called We Gotta Get SpongeBob Back? Yes. It's you see like, a Joe one. You gotta get SpongeBob, SpongeBob back. back. But what happens in it, Zoe? Yeah. <laughs> it's like we like it it's like weirdly like Squidward I, goes on like a weird odyssey. Yeah. To get Spongebob back. And he's, like, screaming and shouting. And compromises and, like... his morals. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's references to, like, like you know, like, Orpheus uh, going into hell. <laughs> and, like... <laughs> and Eurydice. You're, like, like, at one point, like, like Mr. Krabs is like, Squidward, don't look back! And Squidward looks back at them. And, like, Eurydice, <laughs> they all, like, turn to dust. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and it's, like... And so, like, in a way, I think, yeah, that's kind of an appropriate comparison. Because at this point, Spongebob and Patrick are just demons. They're just, <laughs> they really like, are. They are just, like, horrible, torturous monsters that, like, they all, like, this elaborate scheme was just so that, like, they know Squidward's not having fun. 
They must know. This A this feels point. very similar to that episode uh, that you got, Gus, where like they uh, Squidward goes to a hotel and SpongeBob and Patrick like insinuate themselves as employees there to like torment him. Yes. Um, this, yes. This also yes. further further emerges. This is funny games, SpongeBob and Patrick again, where like they show inordinate like reality warping abilities in their quest to annihilate Squidward's yeah. happiness. I think it really sucks because I know we've mentioned this before, but the point of Skid- Squidward, like as a character, it always seemed to be that like he was a guy who was not living life to his fullest. He was withdrawn. He like chooses not to enjoy things when like if he looked at it in a different angle, there might be something there. But this is something where it's like it's evolved over time to Squidward is a person who has things he's interested in. He likes the finer things in life. He likes art. He likes going on vacation. He likes de-stressing. But at every turn, the, the SpongeBob and Patrick, like they 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 like Tantalus. He is being given the fruit in arm's reach, but then it's pulled back away because he is in this cyclical punishment where like the more he wants even a modicum of happiness, the more that these, like, maniacs will keep it from him. Sp- yeah, Spongebob Spongebob and Patrick are, like, it, it reminds me of, um, you know that, uh, that, like, meme that was circulating around where, like, Spongebob and Patrick are just, like, running around outside and Squidward's behind the blinds. Yes. And he's, like, looking through. Like, that's, like, yeah. the, uh, like, what you're talking about, like, the withdrawn shit. But now it's, like, Spongebob and Patrick are not, like, the, the bright side of things. They're, like, the fucking blight side of, <laughs> like, they, they, <laughs> like, they yeah, harass yeah. him. They bl- Light Squidward with two problems. <laughs> they hurt him so bad, and they're so they're not bright. Like, they're just like flaming demons of hell. And and like, as it's... well. In earlier episodes, Squidward used to be a jerk as well. Now they just write yeah. him as like depressed, like a sad sack. And it's like, why are yeah, we no, hanging up on this poor guy? Literally, his crime this episode was deciding that he should check his mailbox and then. Like, crime number two, this is the hubris for which the universe must punish him for, is that some other guys presented him with a vacation he didn't think he was able to take, and he was like, you know what? Maybe that will be fun. But they knew. And that was his and From the out. second that they proposed that to him, they knew that this trip was Let's go on a plane and murder four people <laughs> and make it so that Squidward cannot get what he thought he didn't even know he was going to have. You know, that, honestly, though, looking at it that way, it makes it a little more interesting. If only it was intentional. Yeah. If only SpongeBob and Patrick were supposed to be the bad guys here. No, it's so true. Yeah, no, it's... I hate to invoke this because, like, last time this happened, we lost an entire series on this channel, but, like, it's like if both Cramp Twins were, like, the blue evil one. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. They are both Wayne Cramp yeah. with reality warping abilities. Yeah. Well, hey, Wayne Cramp, you know, famously was the leader of the villains on the Fox box at one point. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end Which this. includes DDD and... Yeah, and anyway, we don't... Forget the Cramp Twins. SpongeBob and Patrick remind me of... Have either of you ever heard of the Stephen King short story, Bad Little Kid? I feel like I have. It's, I've seen a lot of I haven't. Stephen I haven't King read shit. it, no. I can't remember what collection it was from, but uh, stop me if you've heard this one, Zooey. But basically, mm-hmm. it's about this journalist going to talk to this guy who is on, like, death row for shooting and killing a child to, like, talk to him right before he's executed and get what his thoughts are. And he basically tells this story about how at different points throughout his life, he would see this, like, grinning, giggling little kid in one of those, like, stupid propeller hats And whenever he saw this kid, like a fucking omen of doom, 
right afterwards, something terrible would happen. Like, he'd lose his job, like, he lost his son, he lost his wife. And, like, any time this, like, bad little kid showed up, that happened. And eventually he was kind of driven to the edge. And uh, he, he lost it, and when he saw the kid again, he fucking shot him. And he was taken to jail, claimed all this stuff, no one believed him, but no one could ever identify the body of the kid he shot either. And the uh, reporter, like, takes all of this in and is like, okay, that's kind of freaky. She leaves, goes out and gets in the car, and, and the, as the story is ending, just as she closes the door of her car, she hears, like, a giggling sound and just sees a flash of colour dart by in her wing mirror. <laughs> oh, my God. That kind, oh, man. That kind of feels like what SpongeBob and Patrick are to Squidward. Or to now. Squidward, yeah. Yeah. They are the Stephen yeah. King bad little kid. <laughs> They're, they're monsters. They're just, they're monsters. They they need to stop. They got the propeller hat and everything in this episode. Th- yeah. yeah. Yeah, in this episode, that's exactly who they were. It's so true. So, uh, oh, man. With that being said, thank you so much for joining us, Zooey. This has been a delight. Uh, we, we, we <laughs> yes. hope thank this you hasn't for scared having you me. off. And that you will appear in more content on the channel and on the Patreon in the future. In addition to a major to. role in a secret project that we'll be <gasps> uh, announcing not long from now. It's, um, so it's so exciting. I think if there is one last thing that we all need to say before this episode ends, it's... <laughs> everyone loves Plankton. 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 Everyone loves Plankton.